right, audience. We've been doing this podcast for a while. I think it's time I reveal a secret. I'm Superman. I've always <gasps> been I've always been Superman. The disability, it's all been one long cover. Which is why we are here to talk to you about the latest piece of Superman media, My Adventures with Superman. Uh, joining me as always are my good friends Tony and Brian, and we have a special new guest with us uh, this uh, episode. Our good buddy Trash, aka Elise Trash Roskinko, VTuber, content creator extraordinaire. We, we'll get to introducing Trash in a second, but Brian, Tony, how you guys doing tonight? And I'm sorry I had to my keep this life. secret from you all all this time. I'm so sorry. I, I, I've wanted to tell you for all these years, but I, I couldn't risk your safety. Oh, my life's been a lie. No. And here I thought I was trying to fly even further to the sun. But unfortunately, I knew the truth. <gasps> You knew this whole time? Well, thank you for, you know, maintaining, you know, my, uh, my secret. I, I, I really appreciate it, Tony. Uh, you knew and you didn't tell me? It, it, it was a, it's a closer bond, Brian. You wouldn't understand. I've been uh, doing this longer than you have, Tony. Uh, but anyway... So let's uh, let's go ahead and introduce uh, the new addition to the panel. Well, Trash, how are you doing tonight? And welcome to the podcast. Oh, we're we're glad to have you on. Thank you for inviting me on. I really appreciate it. Uh, yeah. It's pretty. It's quite an honor to be on here with you with y'all. And uh, yeah, it's um, I'm the least Trash Rosinko, VTuber friend of Miss. Uh, I was gonna call him Mr. J's Caldea, but here. Uh, it's yeah, it, it, it's you. It's YouTube. It's just Jay here. It's just Jay. Um. Or I guess it's also I, Spotify. Uh, but you know, it's just Jay. But I'm doing good. Uh, you know, just here with y'all. Oh yeah, we, ready to talk about Superman. Oh yeah, we were. And, yeah, we were excited to have you on because uh, you know, uh, the reason we brought Trash on is kind of the same reason we uh, we bring a uh, Cap onto these things occasionally. Uh, me, Trash, and Tony, like whenever we hang out on the weekends, we always ended up talking about the episode. And so, like, mm -hmm. we were like, man, we gotta have you on for this one, Trash. So here he is. Um, Cap can't always have the. Uh... DC animated. Yep. Guest spot. He can't have he can't have a monopoly. Plus, I have him for a much more important episode. Uh yeah. for, so but more on that later. For sure. Uh but yeah, this is gonna be a, a really, really huge one. You know, I talked about the pilot episode when it first aired on an earlier uh, screen time segment. You know, Superman is a hero that is very important to me. In particular, mm -hmm. he's a character that I didn't appreciate as much as a kid as I than I do as an adult. Um, and like a lot of people misunderstand Superman and kind of like, you know, don't get the message. But I'm happy to report that this show definitely gets the message. Uh, I really like this interpretation. Oh. I really like this interpretation. I love the animation style. I love the fact that it has an anime ass opening. Um it's it's great. The OP is awesome. And outro. Oh yeah, and yeah, and E D. It has an OP and E D, very much like, you know, your standard anime, which is dope. Um mm. But yeah, it, it's it's pretty great. Um so what I wanna open the discussion with for, uh for the episode is kind of uh just a discussion on Superman in media and kind of our our takes on Superman and what are some of our favorite interpretations we've seen so far. Uh, so we'll start with our guest first. Uh, Trash, what are some of your favorite interpretations of Superman and what do you, what do you kind of think of the character? Funny enough, I've always, like, I grew up with Superman. Mm -hmm. I never realized it too much because I would always, I my first one was obviously the the Superman animated series that they mm -hmm. had. Yeah. Um, so Classic. that's how I see Superman. Uh, 
someone who's like does is not as strong who can't really breathe in space you know is super strong but also quite can be quite uh, hit quite hard yeah it doesn't hurt him as much but he still gets um he still can get beaten up yep um and as i grew older you know i've always uh kept him in kind of like in the back of my mind because honestly one of my fa- honestly my favorite superhero is aquaman Huh. Which is probably something not very many people would say or that's know. yeah no that's that's a very underrated pick i respect it yeah Ar- arthur yeah. arthur's yeah. dope you know we, we 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 like arthur curry in this house on on this podcast yes we do and so i'm a little yeah. worried about his movie but yeah yeah i mean everybody is it mm-hmm. uh-huh. dc in general obviously with uh just in terms of movies w- yeah wb it yeah it's wb mm-hmm. but to be fair to wb but, wb also made this so yeah so uh but uh yeah so i grew up with that and as i grew up uh i would always like uh hear about how superman's not only just like super strong but he has a nice a great sense of justice you know truth justice the american way mm-hmm. uh started respecting that a lot more kind of giving like that uh, not the person like that you could possibly emulate, but someone that you can try to and something. Oh to- yeah, yeah. Superman is an ideal for sure, and I I think that's the that's the important part, and I think that's definitely the part that I missed as a kid, because as a kid, I gravitated towards Batman because Batman was a person and Batman was somebody who pushed himself to the limits and didn't let any limitation stop him. So I like very much looked up to that and that's what I wanted to strive to be. Uh, but as an adult now with seeing how dark the world is, you know, I realize that you do need, you know, someone like a Superman. You need someone to, you know, help you believe that everything's gonna be okay, that you can get through this, that you can have hope throughout any situation. Um, so it's very important, for sure. So, uh, Brian, we'll, we'll, we'll move to you next. Um, what are your thoughts on Superman as a character, and what are some of your favorite iterations uh, from media? Well, like Trash said, the Timverse, um, I think, honestly, the Superman cartoon was the first Timverse show that I saw. Hmm, cool. And Usually people start with BTS. Well, honestly, part of my thing was because I grew up overseas, it was whatever was on. Ah. It gotcha. was whatever they chose to uh, bring over to this Japan and mm-hmm. all that. and. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's just because I was the right age and all that at the time. But uh, it was as an adult that I uh, learned to appreciate Batman more and uh, the greatness and masterpiece that is the Batman the Animated Series. But as a kid, I more leaned towards the Superman cartoon. And, of course, I've seen the... uh, at least some of the Christopher Reeves movies. Uh, and I never saw it, but I saw a review of uh, the fourth one with Nuclear Man. Oh, Superman 4, The Quest for Peace. That movie is hilarious. Oh my yes. god. The, the, the fucking visual gag where he donated a strand of his hair to the Smithsonian and it's holding up like a ton. Mm-hmm. Uh, like... I got a one-ton beam. Oh, it, that's fucking hilarious. It's great. And the introduction of uh, Lex Luthor's nephew, Squiggy. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Superman for the quest for peace. John Cryer, who would later come back to be... Lex Luthor. Flex. Yep. Which is funny. Which yeah. is funny. But, yeah. Um. Then, I know he wasn't really a part of it, but... We did both individually and together talk about Supergirl's show, which featured him. And then in previous iterations, we talked about uh, Superman and Lois. We tried to do an episode about season three, but that one got lost, I believe. Yep. 
I, bl I, I blame Voldemort. I blame Voldemort, as we did all but, throughout the episode. Inside joke here, people, but, uh... Don't worry, yeah. I'll explain that joke when we get to season four. Okay. You'll just have uh, to wait. Yeah, you know, you, in. Yeah, you gotta tune in. That's the point. But, anyway... So, yeah, I've always had an affinity for the character I know. La Gasp. Me, the optimist of the, for the longest time, duo, and now trio, and now... Quintet. Quad? Oh. Oh, Quintet. Or, no, 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 Quintet's fives, yeah. Yeah, I... Yeah. Huh. What is Quartet? a... What is... Yeah. Yeah, I guess. I got... We gotta look that up. What is a four-person group called? Huh. Anyways. Well, anyway. Anyway. So, I've always had an... I haven't really read a lot of his comics, but just as a character in general. I always lean towards him as a character. You know, like you said, truth, justice, and all that. And the fact that he, like, stands up for the little guy, and he is a nerd at heart. And I didn't think about it until you yourself, Jay, pointed it out to me. Mm-hmm. Might have been in an off-camera conversation mm -hmm. about how uh, about how real people know Superman when they put it that Superman is the mask and Clark Kent is the real person and not the other way around. Yeah, I mean those are those are the best stories, right? Like you know, yeah, they they focus on the man, not the super. But yeah. Um, we don't really talk about the Cavill version because he, no knock on Cavill, I feel like he could have made a perfect Superman in a different situation, but given the one that we had, it just didn't work out. I'll just say that. Shout out but, to Brandon yeah. Ralph. Shout out to Brandon Ralph. You forgot about Brandon Ralph, like, oh, yeah. like, like most everybody does, but shout out to Brandon Ralph. <laughs> He was also Argu very who, solid. Who arguably played, I would say, two of the best Supermen. Like, the stuff they were in was not great. But he himself was great. Because in uh, Legends of Tomorrow, underrated TV show that we did cover a lot, personally, yep. Yep. Um, he, he showed up. Not as that Superman. He played as the Kingdom Come but, Superman. Yeah. Yeah. And even though he's faced all this crap and all this stuff, he still managed to be a beacon. Ah, uh, yeah. You, you know that that that's what that's what happens when you know the Spectre and a priest give you a massive lecture and prevent you from having a massive superhero civil war. And mm -hmm. after that war kind of dusted and settled itself, and you go into a fucking rampage because the governments of the world decided they wanted to be on your fuck shit. Yep. Uh, good shit. Uh, but anyways, mm -hmm. so Tony, uh, you and mm -hmm. you you and I come, uh, you know, come at this from more of a comic fan perspective. So I want to hear yours first, and then I'll go into me. Okay, well, with my first experience with Superman, it was actually with uh, the Justice League uh, series from the Tim Burst. Mm -hmm. And it slowly kind of evolved, and then what really made me love his character is the real introspection when we get to see what he becomes in uh, Beyond. Mm -hmm. in, and Beyond. And mm -hmm. then that got me thinking a little bit more. And for the longest time, I did enjoy, sometimes here and there, it's not often, but Brendan Routh's performance in Superman Returns was one of my more favorite. Oh, yeah. Films that I've seen. Oh, yeah. By far, the, uh, the crowning jewel in my love for Superman growing up, even though he is not a, well, for me, I can always look up to Superman to be 
the optimistic person. Like, as much as I can be real, not so much as cynical, but I try to be as pragmatic and realistic as possible in a lot of my decision making or mm -hmm. a lot of things. But it's Superman and Captain America on Marvel's side that give me the optimism to actually trust in human beings. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Humanity. That's what Clark represents. And nothing shows that level of hope in putting people, like really trying to help out a person, because it's the Superman and Lois Superman. Oh, yeah. And Clark. Mm -hmm. That's the oh, yeah. how to do an amazing Superman. But yeah. also, the adaptation of Superman and the Elite really mm. solidified my love for uh, Clark as a character. Oh, yeah, for sure. Same. You comprehend a lot of what Clark goes through a lot of the time. That it's not simple issues that can be solved with one, you know, super punch. Yep. Clark has, he was raised in Kansas. He was raised as a farm boy. A good old boy mentality to just do the right thing. Mm -hmm. well, I think a lot of people kind of find that like old school and antiquated, but it's an important thing to really kind of at the baseline to get your values in order. Oh, yeah. And then I'm an experience you can kind of help add to that because we're not stagnant a lot of the time. At least humanity as a whole, in mm -hmm. my personal belief, can be as stagnant to just stick to what we are now, where we can be so much better than, like, the person we can be tomorrow is going to be a lot better than the person we were today. Keep talking, Tony. And... I'm going to grab something real quick. You can you keep going. Oh, yeah. You can keep going. Yeah. So... I get what you're saying. One of the things that... Because the whole point of that story with Manchester Black and the Elite was basically challenging why Superman is meant to be around still when we're entering an age of people who are more as Brian kind of alluded to more cynical and more distrusting of others if I'm getting by that vibe well, what you were talking about Brian yeah and living in the kind of world we do, where a lot of people don't really trust each other, I mean, some well, a good majority of the time it's warranted, but my personal belief is without hope and optimism, where would we leave humanity but just back into our old, like our old mentality of just huddling in the cave? Exactly. With our, and just not really having the room to grow and improve as a species. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm just no, no. rambling. No, I get it. I get it. So, uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll go. I'll. But we'll go ahead. We'll go ahead and jump to me. So with me, I've said this every time we've talked about a super, uh, like a Superman-related piece of media, but you know, it's bear, it bears repeating again. Um, you know, my uh, I myself. Uh, didn't start as a big Superman fan, but my dad always was, and so like I I grew up hearing all about Superman, like seeing the comics, watching the movies, watching the animated series, all the different animated movies. Uh, in fact, one of the biggest things that we, we bonded over was like, uh, you know, when the show first started, when I was like in first grade, we watched all of smallville and uh like when he got back from deployment you know each time he got back from deployment i would have like a a whole like stack of episodes saved on dvr and we would sit there and we'd watch all those episodes mm -hmm. 
Uh, yeah, Smallville yeah. was a was a big part of my childhood. Uh, you know, I love Tom Willing's portrayal of a, a young Clark trying to figure himself out. Um, you know, of course, Superman uh, S-Tass is fantastic slash JL and JLU. Tim Daly, he has that voice that kind of carries that hope and optimism oh, yeah. that you would expect from a Superman. Uh, he's he's fantastic. He's not on the level of a uh, Kev Conroy for me, where he's the voice I hear when I read a Superman. But I think that's because Superman's voice isn't unique. And I'm not saying that as like a bad thing. I'm saying that like every iteration of Superman has their own unique voice. As long as it's like the, the proper message, it works. Yeah. You know? I, I, and, yeah. um... With with Superman in like the comics, at least I was never really a fan. Uh, but that might have to do with the fact that like I kind of did this wrong, and this was the first thing I read. Not this exact thing. Uh, I just got this recently, but this story was the first story I I ever read of Superman. Um, and and of course, following that was the Reign. Of the Superman, and I ended up liking the other Superman way more than actual <laughs> base Superman, especially Superboy, because uh, he had a cool jacket, um, and I wanted that jacket. But like over the years, as I've gotten older, I've re um, and especially like now seeing Superman as a father, uh, I've really gotten to really respect and connect with Superman and appreciate his humanity because the reason why superman is the most important hero in the dc universe is because superman is unwavering superman is the hero that you know wants to guide humanity to their you know full potential he wants to see us succeed you know and like being in a universe where you have somebody out there who is always rooting for you, like, you know, it, it means a lot. And, you know, it's kind of something that, like, I've kind of learned that, you know, to tell myself of like, kind of like a what would Superman do kind of thing. Or like, you know, Superman would believe in you. You can do this. And uh, it, it, it's helped a lot. And so, like, the character is, you know, very important to me. And, uh, you know... All, all his different iterations have, you know, taught me different lessons. And, uh, you know, this one's no different. We, we, we have a lot of stuff to discuss about, you know, Clark and his journey in this show. But before we do all that, we're going to jump right into the news with Brian. Hate to do it, but uh, we gotta start sad again. This seems like a regular thing. Hopefully, it won't be. But uh, we have a memoriam to do, and uh, I know I'm probably not getting to all of them, but we have lost a lot of people in the last two or so weeks since we last recorded. Yep. First off, uh, I was never really a fan, but it's always a tragedy, and this is a big name for people who do run in this circle. We lost a Bray Wyatt. Yep. Um, you know, uh, I, 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 I was a wrestling fan as a kid. You know, it's, it's definitely sad to hear. Uh, he's 36. Yep. Very young. Uh, heart attack, apparently. Yeah. Unfortunately, I hate to say it, he's not the youngest person that we lost. Yep. Moving to the music world, the rapper Takeoff. That was the a youngest member. That was months ago. Amigos. That was months ago. No, no, that was just last week. No, that was months ago, dude. He was killed in Houston months ago. It was not last week. What the fuck? 
then my news article that I got from it was wrong. That was months ago. That happened a long time ago. Still tragic. Oh yeah, it's definitely tragic. Yeah, it, it happened almost a year ago now. Uh, rest in peace. They they did. Oh, uh, I think the article you read probably was the fact that they finally charged the guy because the guy was oh. charged for takeoff's murder this week or this past week. That's good. Mm hmm. But we also uh, sad day, especially for uh, meme loving people, because uh, we lost uh, Steve Harwell, the lead singer of Smash Mouth. Yep. That was sad. Yeah. And uh, we also lost a Jimmy Buffett, Margaritaville man himself. Dun, 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 dun. Yep. Yes. Tequila. He will be eating cheeseburgers, hopefully right now. Yep. Uh, also, uh, I don't know if you have this on the list, but, uh, you know, bring it back to the Timverse. We unfortunately... Oh, yeah, that I have that. We unfortunately lost uh, Arlene Sorkin, the original voice of Harley Quinn. Yeah, I was trying to go on a theme, but oh, oh, my bad. Yeah, we we did lose her, and it's sad, very sad actually. Mm -hmm. Um, but one last one for the music world: we lost Gary Wright, the guy known for doing Dreamweaver. Yep. Oh, dream and weaver. Yep. I won't mm -hmm. sing the rest because I don't want to get copyright. Uh. Look, I, look. Th this is this is why people purposely sing badly so it doesn't sound anywhere near close, so you can't get caught. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, probably an unsung hero, but I just wanted to point it out. Mm -hmm. Uh, Nizo. Yatamato. Uh, he was the uh, he's a Japanese art director. Mm -hmm. he, he started his career with Future Boy Conan. Oh, cool! But then he joined a certain studio, Studio Ghibli, and worked on Castle in the Sky, Grave of the Fireflies, Princess Mononoke. And Spirited Away. So all the good ones. Oh. oh. And then, most recently, he also worked on the the uh, popular films, The Girl Who Leapt Through Time That's a and Weathering With You. That's a fantastic one. Weathering With You is good, but not as great as people say it is. Although it's a Makoto Shinkai movie, so it's still beautiful. And then the last one I have on the list is The Legend Himself. Bob Barker. Yep. Thanks to him, all, you know, thanks to him, many a cat was spayed and or neutered. Oh. You know, from from now on, the price is wrong. Yeah. No bitch this time. I hope you got to, I hope you got to come on down to heaven. Bob, you deserved it. You deserve it. Mm hmm You know, you like And you know that mm -hmm. not only was he known somewhat for the Spay and New Year cats, but he actually like single handedly helped control the population of cats and dogs in America. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. without him we would have gotten to like huge epidemic problems. Now nah, he's now nah, he's the man, Bob. Look, Bob, Bob Barker, yeah. you know, game shows were a big part of my childhood. So, like, you know, to, oh, yeah. so especially to hear Bob Barker uh, pass, that, that's, that's super sad. My uh, my grandmother, uh, rest in peace, used to uh, almost exclusively watch the uh, game show network. Yep. Uh, yeah, my grandma so. and my mom loved game shows. Uh, my uh, Specifically, uh, Price is Right. Wheel of Fortune and Family Feud. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those oh. are my favorite game shows. Yep. I all I also, I also the, personally the I also personally enjoyed uh, Hollywood Squares. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
But my all-time favorite game show is uh, Press Your Luck. Ooh, that's one a fun one. one. That, that is one of my favorite. That's a fun one. I, I like the ones where um, it's actually intellectual. Yeah. Oh. I, I like the smart ones, but I'm also more partial to, like, do action mm -hmm. do no i i mean yeah i mean i grew up on i i'm with you tony yeah. as a 90s kid who grew up on nickelodeon gas hold to totally with you i just meant i just meant like didn't really care for the ones where uh just simply luck was involved like a uh, deal or no deal oh, oh yeah that's also fair. Uh, yeah one, like, another game that i really love is jeopardy that's because I like having useless facts in my noggin. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 I am, I am the king of storing useless information. So, yeah. So I'm with you on that one as well. Uh, rest and in peace to Alice Jenny Trebek. Is doing a good yeah. job, but not as good as the legend. Of course. RP. Yeah. Rest in peace. Well. Rest in yeah. peace, Alice Trebek. But yeah, man, uh, it's been a lot of loss. But like, you know, that's life. Life moves on. Yeah. And. uh Going from sad to probably again lately a trend it seems mm -hmm. to mad. We got a few good and bad uh, writer strike updates, writer actor strike updates. Okay. First of all, apparently SAG Afra mm -hmm. reached out to the uh, collective. I don't know what they're called. I forgot the acronym for them, but it's the collective of all the big companies. Yeah, yeah. And they said, like, are you willing now? And, like, actually reached out to, like, just do negotiations. Not, like, fully accept our deal, mm -hmm. but just to do negotiations. And they said no. Oh. So, the, sh the strike is still going on, but, but, morale is still up high, which is good, and to help morale, they actually recently just did a picket line D and D game, huh? Hosted by none other than Brendan Lee Mulligan. Oh, that's fun. And several Dimension Twenty Critical Role uh, live play people who are also in the guild showed up for support. And then uh, next up, we have some updates about um, media that's being pushed back because of it. Mm -hmm. Like, True Detective is being pushed to January. Makes sense. Marvel, Marvel, all of their TV stuff has been pushed back, but... I'm gonna be honest with want... I'm gonna be honest with you. Good, because Marvel TV hasn't put out anything good after the first batch. Besides Werewolf by Night, Werewolf by Night was good. Yeah. Um. One of them. One of the promising ones that I will comment on is uh, "What If" season two mm -hmm. is being pushed back to, I think they said Christmas time. Okay. But if you want to know the rest, just look it up. Everybody's talking about it. Um, but we're not done with Disney. We'll come back. I just want to mention real quick that... Uh, well, actually, we're sticking on Disney. Sorry. My bad. Blah. There's a lot here. Uh, Hulu, which is now owned by Disney. Mm -hmm. Do not know if they're doing this because of the strike or not, but my suspicion is, so I'm including it in here. Okay. They canceled the ever-popular award-winning show, The Great. Oh! That show is hilarious! Uh, which, by the way, if you guys are unaware of what The Great is, it is this uh, historical mm -hmm. period comedy about Catherine the Great and her legendary escapades. Yeah. Starring Ella Fanning. Yep, Elle Fanning is yeah, Elle Fanning is uh is Catherine the Great. Uh it yeah. it, it was pretty funny. Um and, and like I said, it 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 
if you if you know if you know your European history, you know that you know Catherine the Great is um you know very well known for you know banging everyone. So, like it, it it's, a, it's, a, it's a fun show. Um, it's sad to hear that it's, it's coming over. Uh, it's uh, ending though. Dang. It's gonna get even sadder because they also axed another show. Oh yeah. Mm. Uh, favorite of the channel, How I Met Your Father. What? No! <laughs> Wait! What? No! Yeah. No! You're telling me we're gonna get, we're just gonna be permanently blue balled? Yep. Although, <laughs> although, although, uh, caveat to this story is, uh, this isn't confirmed, but somebody. Somebody has stated that uh, they went to a stand-up show where one of the writers was the opening act, mm -hmm. and he had just learned the news, so he was pissed, and according to this word of a word, he blurted out, fine, the dad was the Indian guy. So... What the fuck? Oh, Tony was right. So, if this guy, if, no, if that, it was me. Oh, that was you who said it was Sid. Oh, yeah. damn it, damn it. We were, oh, man. We, I, I was, I was real. I was really rooting for Ian. I was really rooting for Ian. Uh, if I remember correctly, Tony said that it was uh, Josh. I forgot his character's name. Oh uh, yeah, he said well, either, he uh, Tony was Tony said either Drew or Ian. Yeah. 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 We were under this impression that there's no way that it was going to be Sid. Like or Jay was talking about. Yeah, yeah, it. yeah. I know that. Yeah, yeah. I but, yeah. I I was definitely not under the impression it was going to be Sid. I had a feeling with the glances that they were giving each other and uh I things going on. Look, I need to know. All right, I, I'm, I, I'm, I need to know if they're gonna blue ball us. I know they need to actually. They just need to come out and tell us. I want to know. Who, who knows? We might eventually get a Mike Flanagan, which, uh, for those that don't get that reference, um, Mike Flanagan, who's worked with Netflix on a bunch of projects, but all of them are miniseries, finally decided, hey, I'm gonna do a show. That is actually suit that is actually ongoing, and what do they do? Cancel it after the first season. Oh. So what does he do? He does an interview, and blurts out everything. Yeah, it was an AMA. All yeah, it was an AMA, and he basically told all basically all the twists and everything that was going to happen. Which, by the way, mm -hmm. shameless plug, uh, that was actually the first episode of our return to Spotify. So you can check our audio backlog for our episode on the Midnight the Club. Midnight Club. Yep. Yep. And uh, we're not we're not done because Disney also did something else, which was not confirmed to be because of the strike, but I have a feeling it's because of the strike. Mm -hmm. Two separate shows. They had rearing to go and ready to go and did all the effects, all of this, and were ready to release it and just decided not to. Uh, I will say, to curb any fears, it's not Percy Jackson. Okay, good. Okay. But it is two other Disney Plus shows. One of them is called uh, was called Nautilus. It was a which, it was a show. It was a twenty thousand under the league TV. Uh, twenty thousand leagues under the sea TV show. I would have watched that. It was a. I would have watched a prequel. that too. It was a prequel about young Captain Nemo. I would have still watched that. It'd have been cool. Yeah. And the other one is a. Uh, the Spiderwick Chronicles. I didn't even know they had that as a, as a TV show. Huh. Yeah, I never heard of that. What is it about? Uh, it's a it's a it's a children's fantasy book series, kind of similar to like stuff like The Secret of Nim, um, you know, that um, basically within that kind of genre, uh, like child, J like a James and the Giant Peach almost kind of thing. Kid gets isekai to a fantasy world, um, and like becomes the savior. Discovers that fantasy creatures do live among us, but 
They're invisible to the human eye. Mm. I don't know why, but I just thought of Harry Potter. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's within it's within that genre. It's within that genre. I believe the Spider-Wick movie might have come out around the time it's the first Harry Potter. Yeah, it did. It did. Yeah, it's, it did. It starred a young uh, Freddie Sizemore. Yep. But uh, anyway, there's one last strike update that is a positive. Okay. Well, also, caveat to those last two is apparently they might be shopping them out to other networks. Shop around how I met your shop around how I met your father. We need to know. We yes. spent we spent by we we spent four hours, thirty six minutes and twenty seven seconds, unpacking our emotional baggage and talking about this show. You cannot tell me that was all for nothing. All right. You. But you cannot make a fool out of me yeah. only without my knowledge, god damn it. I will do that by choice. And if I wanted what? to pack my shit with my homie and it was all for nothing, mm -hmm. then I'm foolish. I'm gonna be upset. It was not all for nothing. I'm be but upset. Still... I mean it was a fun episode. I get it. But still, but... like come on, man. And fun show. But uh to end on a positive note about the strike though. In a weird upset, um, the uh, AMC has made an agreement and met the demands of the strike and will continue. Good for AMC. Okay, cool. Yep. Which, speaking of, that leads me into my final story, which is a quick one here, mm -hmm. is apparently, I don't know why, but AMC has decided for a limited time for the months of September and October to air seven different of their shows on Max. Oh, cool. As like a pop-up streaming thing. Which shows? Uh, I don't, don't have them written down, but I know uh, the Fear the Walking Dead... Interview with a Vampire. I uh, want. I really wanted to see that Interview with a Vampire show. Uh, what you call it? Um, the Norman Reedus um, oh, motorcycle yeah. show that the, he did. Uh huh. Yep. That's on there. Uh, a uh, like cowboy show that they did. Is on there. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I'd and... love to see another cowboy show because or just cowboys and oh yeah, westerns. Just uh, I mean, Justified is going on right now, which is pretty also, great. Um, I think it just ended. Yeah. And also going on right now is the whole Yellowstone universe, uh, which yeah. uh, they're traveling west. Mm -hmm. the... Which uh, I don't know if y'all know. I was going to include the trailer. But it only ended up being like a teaser. Uh there and they don't know if it's connected to the universe or not, but the creator is doing a sh new show about a similar about a famous cowboy of history that people don't really talk about. Bass Reeves? Yup. Ah oh, shit. Love well, that yeah. guy. He he's my favorite legendary cowboy. Everybody talks about fucking Wyatt Earp all the goddamn time, but nobody pays attention to Bass Reeves, the original Ooh. Batman. Mm hmm. So that's gonna be cool, and we can maybe cover it when it comes out. Who uh, knows? I hope so. I mean, we have the means. We have the means. But because it's probably gonna be a paramount that's the news. thing. News. I know it was a while. Thanks for tuning in. It was uh, a lot of stuff to go through. All right. So now we're going to move into, I think it's that time again. It is indeed screen time. <laughs> screen time is a segment of the podcast where we all, you know, go down the line and we talk about the different forms of media we've consumed in between podcast episodes. So I'll start off first. I've got 
quite a few things uh, on, on the list. So, like I said, I got this in the mail recently. Uh, the Death of Superman 30th Edition graphic novel. I, uh... I got this uh, because I have uh, I subscribed to uh, DC Universe Infinite for uh, research purposes for our upcoming project that you know I'll keep teasing until we are uh, ready to actually make the full announcement. But stay tuned for that. Um, it's really good. Um, I I like a lot of the digital recolorings that are in here. Like uh, it's it's really improved a lot of the. Um, the art from the original uh it doesn't look dated it actually looks very modern when you flip through it you wouldn't think that this is a comic from the 90s because of the uh the great job they've done like retouching it and there's a lot of really interesting information in here about like why they did it the thought process how all the editors organized this event and, you know, as somebody who is an editor, I was really interested in kind of seeing, you know, kind of what decisions they had to make and how they put it together. Uh, so that was really cool. Um, in terms of other stuff, uh, I watched uh, the episode of East Blue OVA, which is the One Piece OVA that covers uh, all of the East Blue saga. Um, I did that to prepare for the live-action One Piece uh, Netflix series that I watched in Discord with uh, a lot of my community, including Tony, uh, like this past weekend uh, as of recording this video. And uh, we had a blast. Uh, we'll talk more about that uh, towards the end of this episode. But uh, it was a lot of fun. Enjoyed that a lot. Uh, I watched uh, the movie... Gaimon with uh, Brian and our pal Jordan and Darth. Uh, also, yeah. also a great movie. Uh, very long, yeah. but uh, very well done action. And good act, good acting, and a, a solid dub for sure. Yeah, and very uh, kind of a little cheesy, but that's what you get when you go for a larger than life action movie. Where uh, it's ninety percent green screen. Yeah. Mhm. Mm it was a it was a fun time. It was a fun time. Uh, in terms of anime, uh, Mushoko Tensei season two just started. Um, it's pretty good so far. I'm enjoying it. Um, you know, and I'm still keeping up with this. You know, the other seasonal stuff I've been watching, Undead Murder Force. Uh, I checked out the Zom One Hundred anime. Uh, pretty good. I, I I enjoyed that a lot. Um, talk about the episode that we weren't able to record because of uh, the hurricane that came through recently, uh, both messing with me and Brian. Uh, we were going to yeah. do an episode on the ZOM 100 movie um, that is on Netflix, and so we all watched it. Um, personally, I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, it streamlined... Uh, it streamlines a lot of the stuff from the anime and uh, makes it make a lot more sense. Um, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Uh, both the sub and the dub are pretty solid. Nice. Uh, um, you know, while, while we're on it, since we all watch it, what did you guys think of uh, the ZOM 100 movie? You know, in, in real quick, brief fashion. Oh, also, I'd probably give it like um, an 8 out of 10 in terms of rating. I enjoyed it a lot. It was a very solid 8.5 for me. I really love because I did uh, I think I did pretty much what you did, Jay. Mm -hmm. And I Brian did. I compared and contrast the anime adaptation and the film adaptation. Uh -huh. And I liked the more streamlined and tight knit story progression yeah, yeah. of the film for the anime, but I get it. Since the anime is adapting the manga itself and making so letting it breathe more works, but yeah. typically in some media, you like to make things a bit more have the condensed. brisk pace, yeah. Yeah. 
It helps because keep attention better. Yeah, lingering on some aspects of a world infested with zombies for far too long, you kind of have your own like special plot holes. But mm-hmm. I like the ideas. Doesn't really explain shit all that well when it how the events occur. Which you don't really need like, to, honestly, since this is more of a comedy. Yep, and also zombie shark. Yeah, love the fucking zombie shark. Fuck yeah. Hell yeah. Can't say I have an opinion on it just because I I actually. Oh, you should you should check it out, Trash. It's a fun one. It's like a mix of Shaun of the Dead and Zombieland. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I'll make sure to check it out then. Um... Yeah, both the anime and the movie are good. Uh, I would actually suggest the movie over the anime because the movie is uh much tighter and more focused. Oh, yeah. Well. Also, the anime, if you're interested, is only like five, six episodes in. Mm-hmm. Eight, actually. Like eight or seven. Seven or eight as of the time of this recording. And they already have ah. a movie out for it? Yeah, the, the, movie, yeah. The, the movie came out at, well, so the movie came out at the same time as Netflix dropped the anime. Um, the, the live action movie is a whole different adaptation. It covers basically the same stuff. But oh, it's a live action one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's a yeah. it's a, it's a, a live action Japanese horror comedy. Yeah. 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 I I will admit, transitioning over to me, mm-hmm. my thoughts. Yeah. Is uh, I like the concept of zombies, but in most media, it's gotten very stale. Like you've said before, even uh. An outlier great one for the Americas, which was The Last of Us, isn't really like zombie zombies. Yeah. So it doesn't technically count. So I will say that uh, up until now, the only thing that I've really liked that involved zombies was uh, All of Us Are Dead. All of Us Are Dead was amazing. Yes, it was. Oh, let's not forget um, Train to Busan. Train to Busan also. The Koreans, the Korean... I haven't seen that. No, I'm just talking about good... I'm just talking about good um, zombie stuff in general, but like Train to Busan, the Koreans know what they're doing with zombies, man. But yeah. I did like Zom 100, and, and uh, I... Technically, this is a breaking tradition because it's not a full-on episode, but honestly, if I was... T- I really enjoyed it. But if I was to give it a number, probably give it eight, like Jay. Okay. All right. Uh, so other stuff that I have uh, been checking out. Um, like I said, we uh, I um I uh watched episode of East Blue, checked out the uh, One Piece live action. Uh, I read the latest One Piece chapter, which was fucking phenomenal. It was a great week to be a One Piece fan last week, let me tell you. Good stuff all around. Uh, and um, in terms of like games and stuff, uh, I'm still debating on uh, a new game to buy. Uh, but uh, I did end uh, to follow up from uh, last uh, last time's episode. I did end up beating Like a Dragon Ishin, and it was great. Uh, Ryoma and Oreo got to live happily ever after, which was you know, all I ever wanted. Um, and, um, whatchamacallit, uh, n- and now, uh, the, uh, what I, what I'm playing on stream right now is, uh, currently, uh, Fate Grand Order's summer event, which I'm having a blast with, uh, you know, if you're a Fate fan, which I know we have, uh, Fate fans in the audience, uh, uh, if you want to know who my su- uh, waifu is for this summer, it's Charlotte Corday. She's got a whole stage magician Zatanna look going on. She's got glasses and she's a sweetheart who deserves all the love in the world. And I will give it to her. Um, man, it's so... And the event is so much fun. It's treasure themed. We get to pal around with our boy Blackbeard. And he's not being weird or creepy. He's just being a bro. Uh, Achilles gets to be a Pokemon trainer. Da Vinci has a baby dinosaur. It's amazing. It's amazing. I'm having an absolute blast. Um, so yeah. 
Uh, moving on, uh, Trash, uh, what stuff have I, what piece of the media have you been consuming uh, in between podcast episodes or just kind of within the past week or so? Well, within the past week, honestly, probably just similar with uh, mm-hmm. been trying to grind all that just as you have. Uh-huh. I haven't been able to read the story because I am trying to like uh, get get through it fast, but I'll definitely read it afterwards because I never let a let an event go by without reading the story. You see, you, uh, you hear you hear that, Fate fans. You don't skip story, and if you skip story, you go back and read it later. We don't ignore the story. I'm looking at you, Fred. I'm looking directly at you. See this camera, Fred? It's pointed in your direction. Rap, bro. <laughs> and of course, uh, I've been reading a lot of manga actually recently. I've nice. Been keeping up with Arumakun. Really. Solid oh, Arumakun. Oh, Arumakun. Oh, Arumakun's Arumakun's nice. I like Arumakun. Um, yeah. I've really been loving the new uh, the new chapters, and then Clara is adorable as always. Mm-hmm. The room is good as Medeus, and ever just all the the whole cast is great. Um, I can't wait to find out what's gonna happen because I, I'm actually I really very I really hope Welcome to Demon School Ermacoon gets a season two. It did actually uh, get a or, season or, two. You know, not, not not a season two. I mean, I meant a season three. I, I meant it does have a season three. Does announced. it? I got announced. Nice. Dope. I believe so, because uh, they're gonna. Grin- that's kind of like one of those anime that you're gonna keep it going. Cool, cool, All cool. Right. Good to know. Uh, good to know that someone else is a big fan of that uh, series, because I really enjoy it myself. Yeah, personally. yeah. Tony was the one that got me into Welcome to Demon School Ermacoon. He uh, he brought it to my attention. Mm-hmm. It is very good, and Clara is will always be best girl, even though Amelia is really great. Yeah. Not yeah. Amelia. Amelia. No, I understand. I understand, but yeah, you gotta you gotta make that clarification because everybody assumes when you're talking about Amelia, you're talking about that one. No, that one. <laughs> the one yeah. with uh Felix, the cat literally. Everybody uh, see everybody loves Felix, but everybody hates Amelia. Exactly. Because mm-hmm. breaking Rem's heart, spoilers. Yep. I've also been reading a. Uh, I've also been playing a game called Fear and Hunger Two Termina. Well, I haven't been playing it, but I've been watching someone play it. So. Oh, cool. They'll have definitely have a. Uh, uh, definitely look out for that because I'll. Well, me and the other person, will be having a. Uh, a like, a playthrough of it. Cool, cool, and I, I will leave, I will leave a link to Trash's Twitch channel in the description for the YouTube people, and uh, you know, I, I'm also helping Trash kind of uh, expand into his YouTube channel as well. So be on the lookout for that. We'll be posting like roll videos whenever Trash does get a chance to roll and stuff. So definitely check that out. Yeah, I, what was the last one that I rolled for again? Uh, I believe it was Oberon. Oh yeah, it was Oberon. That one took a little bit, but at least I got MP2. Did and you uh, manga, did you so? did you end up uploading that one by the way? Not yet. I still have to upload it because I've oh I've yeah yeah oh yeah you have with work yeah and, and you still have anime. to yeah and you still have to actually make the channel. So once yeah. trash once trash makes the channel and uploads the video, I'll put that link in the description. Also, uh, been reading some manga called Shingaku. Oh uh, oh, that Sleepy sounds Dead. familiar. Nice. Both BL novels. Um, very interesting. Nice, uh, nice. You, and fun, you like, actually, if you're into that, you like you you like to diversify every now and then. Um, that actually reminds me, I did start checking out a new manga as well. Uh, most because I saw a Gigguk video recently that got me really interested. Uh, because you know, uh, if if you if you know me well enough, and uh, you've been a fan of the channel for long enough, you know, uh, you know. If if there's something that is your boy is a connoisseur of, it is your good it is your good etchy series, and I think I found it. Uh, it it is a it is a manga called Chain Soldier. Um, I'm not gonna say the Japanese name because it, uh, it involves slave, because the manga does involve um s- slavery, but. Man, is it good! Essentially, to kind of give you an idea what the uh, what the manga is about, it's by the same mangaka who did *Akame Ga Kill*. So imagine, right? 
it's a world where monsters have broken through from another dimension and are attacking Earth. And they were able to create super soldiers to defend Earth from these monsters. However, these processes only worked on women. So your military defense squad is essentially um, a squad of different flavors of Esdef from a, a Kamega kill. And we all know Esdef is God tier. And essentially what happens is uh, our main character, uh, who is this kind of uh, like he wants to save the world and you know defend his country, but he just doesn't have the power to do so. Um, uh, but uh, due to help from one of uh, the leader of a particular squad, um, he activates this. Uh, uh, she activates a dormant power within him that turns him into, gives him like this super monster form that allows him to just tear through the armies of the bad guys. However, the requirement for this power is that he uh, that he submits to her and basically forms a slave contract. And a stipulation for this contract is that, uh, you know, the the leader of the squad, who uh, is the master, has to uh, reward the reward her slaves proportionately to uh, the amount of energy that they spent uh, in their encounter. And the reward is basically, you know, her sitting, uh, her finding various different ways to sit on the main character's face. Um, oh, yeah. And, and I am 1000% down for that. Um, uh, 1000%. It's, it's good etchy. The fan service is there, but also the fan service doesn't interrupt the plot. It's actually integrated very well into the plot. It doesn't pause the plot and just, you know, all right, here's our sexy time. No, our sexy time is actually integral to the plot and the world building. And it, it's really good. The art, the designs of all the waifus are great. There are no lollies in it. I'm happy. It's fantastic. But here's the question, though, Jay. Mm -hmm. As you know, I am also a connoisseur of this type of media. Uh huh. In fact, I myself a moniker because of it. Mm hmm. You know what? Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh, oh yeah! The harem kick. I remember. Oh, the harem. The harem is pretty decent. Uh, in fact, the, uh, the series itself has kind of a harem setup because since he is a slave to the squad leader, he ends up because uh, ever since society changed with like the women being the ones defending the country, it also flipped the social hierarchy of the genders. So the, the power dynamic is basically reversed. So now homeboy uh, has to live with the squad at the in their shared like apartment and he has to cook and clean and you know put his work in to prove that he's uh you know worth something and of course he gets rewarded by the various various squad members and each different squad member with their different you know form of etchy actually gives him a different power which is really cool I I like it a lot. It's good. The next part of my question here, Jay. Mm -hmm. Since you know me pretty damn well. Yes. Is there a waifu that will activate any neurons in my brain just right away? Tony, literally every single one of them is a uh, is one of the is a step on me type. So yes, literally every single one of them. But there's got to be like different varieties. Oh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like the, the step on me thing is is a is kind of the baseline, and they have like you know little extra flavors to it. If I have, if there are soon bitches, I'm okay. Oh, with they have they have one of my favorite soon derays in this series, dude. Like I like like. You know, just just for just for example, and I don't throw this comparison around, but 
and and I haven't read far enough to fully confirm this, but if this character keeps going the way that I think she's going, I think this girl is on her way to becoming a Rin Tosaka level tsundere. No. I don't... Tony, really? Tony, you know I don't throw that around easy. Man. Rin's, my, Rin, like, Rin's my number that's one. Tall. That's a tall order there, homie. Yeah. And she she's also got the thighs for it. So, that's, man. That's, all we, that's man. all we need. Yep. Pigtails, thighs, and the the blush and huff. Man, her, her huff is strong, Tony. The huff is very strong. The huff is... Like, if we have to go on a scale of 1 to 10... 10 being the highest of hops. From what I've seen right now, she's a solid 8.5. That's that's a high level of puffery right there. Yep. No, uh, so long story short, please read Chain Soldier. It's great. Uh, it, if if you if you're in if you're in the degen camp and you know you 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 like you like your degenerate etchy with some actually good plot and power systems, go read it. It's great. I love it. Have fun. Uh, mm-hmm. Enjoy it. And you can read it one-handed. I'm not here to judge you. <laughs> and then also speaking of uh like kind of harem things. Uh huh. Also been reading 100 Girlfriends. Oh like yeah, yeah, that's a good one. That's a one good of my one. Favorite manga, so make sure to go check that out. And that one's actually uh, getting an adaptation soon. Yes, in that October. It's so great. I'm excited. Rentaro's best boy, and then all the girls are best girls. All of them are S tier. Yep, I'm. I'm all... Although. Oh man. It's been a while. Since that. Yeah, it's a. It's no, it's, it's a good one. Really. It's a good yeah. one. I've been keeping up with it as well. Ever since Trash brought it to my attention, I've I've been I've been reading it in the background as well. I've just been out of the loop of that one because I really enjoyed reading it. Oh yeah, no, so it's fun. it's fun. It's fun. And then as for anything else, um, well, I mean, obviously my adventures with Superman, right? Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> but we'll talk about that later. Okay, so Brian. Uh, what have you been? What media have you been consuming uh, in between uh, podcast episodes? And I do apologize for this like impromptu weave hour, y'all. But like, it, it, it's it's very rare that we get someone else on the uh, on the cast that we get to weave out with. So had to be done. Yeah. yeah. Um, I will admit that this this week I was just mostly watched One Piece and. Uh, my adventures with Superman, but uh, last week when we were gonna do Zom One Hundred, uh, between that and uh, um, Goemon, which we already talked about, I got on a pretty big like foreign kick. Uh, so I also watched a uh, Korean movie called a uh, Kill Box Soon. Okay. It's a live action movie. It's basically about this older woman, I think in her 50s, who uh, is a single mother to a teenage girl. But what she does in her day job is that she is a professional assassin. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. And not only is she a professional assassin, she's apparently the professional assassin, has a 100% kill rate. Never fails. Always does everything perfect. But when one of her cases hits a little too close to home, things go awry and the company that she's a part of, because similar to um John Wick, there's a whole like company established interconnectivity of assassins. Mm-hmm. Her own company turns on her, and so now she must fight to survive while juggling dealing with a teenage daughter. But also, her boss has a not-so-secret crush on her and is trying to protect her, but in his own way, if you catch my drift. 
Ah. And so it's really good, but I will give a caveat going into it. It's a thriller first. It does have action scenes in it, but it has like five during the whole entire movie. Hmm. And those five are really well done. Like there's one where where we're following like rooting for two separate characters. The mom and another character. And they're having like one of those fights where it's like their own individual fight within the whole big fight. Uh Uh-huh. Right. And the way they transition between the two of them, it's very well done. It's like a rotating camera. Oh, so kind of, so kind of, each... so kind of like how One Piece uh, did it in some of their uh, some of their big shots. Yeah, but more like um, grounded action. Mm, gotcha. Okay. Um, and it was really good. It got a little slow at parts, and like I said, it seems to be a thriller first, but. It's good when it's good, and it is rated warning uh, TVMA, and it rightfully deserves that with like all the blood and gore that's in it. Okay, cool. Uh, then um, I watched a uh, I think it was Japanese movie called The Pirates, The Lost Royal Treasure. Okay. It's a live action pot. Killbox Zoon was also live action, by the way. Yeah, you mentioned uh, but, that. Uh, oh, sorry. Bleh. Anyway, The Pirates is apparently a spiritual sequel to another movie called The Pirates with no subtitle. Mm-hmm. But uh, this one that I watched was really good. It's about a group of bandits and pirates working together to find this ancient lost treasure. It's really good. It's The plot is stereotypical, but it is really well done. It is up until One Piece. It was one of the best like pirate media things that I've seen in a very long time. Uh, they even have their own... Um, their own, like, whirlpool scene, because you know how, like, one of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies had, like, a whirlpool scene? Yeah, yeah. They have their own. Cool. Which was really good, and the they did not spare on the effects. Um, the lead guy is at least, I think only Jay, maybe Tony's gonna get this reference, but, and Trash might as well, now that I'm thinking about it, but the main dude is at least semi-exalted as far as power levels go. Nice. Okay. Um, And his character is a bandit, but basically he kind of reminds me of, if this makes any sense, if Johnny Depp played Will in Pirates of the Caribbean. Yes, I, I know exactly what you mean. And the lead chick... Lee Chick, I think Jay's only going to get this reference. Reminded me a lot of Once Upon a Time's Mulan, who, yes, was a pirate. Yep. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, I remember her. God damn it. She was cool. She was cool. Yeah. She was one of the best parts of that show. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. So that movie was great. I'd highly recommend it. Um, both of those movies are on Netflix. Um, also on Netflix was a a K, I guess drama you could call it, called a uh, Black Knight. I've been wanting to see it for a while now. Mm-hmm. If you go to Netflix, it's the one with the dude with a mask. Oh, okay, yeah, I've seen, I've seen it. I mean, I've seen the poster. Yeah, it's a Korean post-apocalyptic movie mm-hmm. where an asteroid hit. Korea and kind of turned it into a Mad Maxi dusty apocalypse. But within the cities, the more 
it's more walled off and the you know, like more rich people live there. And of course when you have separate cities, you similar to uh similar to a twisted metal, mm-hmm. but more bad maxi apocalypse. You have delivery men who uh-huh. deliver and they're called the Black Knights. Um because you imagine that in a like Mad Maxi world, your bandits are gonna be like pretty supercharged. So you need someone who's good at fighting to be a delivery man. Mm. So all the delivery men are like these badass forces of nature. And our story follows this kid that wants to be one. And like his journey, but also a story where uh, in this post-apocalyptic world, when uh, one of the like governmental higher-ups starts getting a little crazy and doing his own like mad plan to like save money and shit, it's down to certain delivery men to help save the day. It's only six episodes. It's very stylized and very awesome. I really enjoyed it. Oh, one unique thing is about these delivery men is unlike um Twisted Metal where everyone just has their own car that they have and then they soup it up. Mm-hmm. All of them have uh, semis. All of the delivery men have a uniform semi. Oh, so they get okay. to so they get to isekai people. Well, isekai bandits if they get in their way. Hmm. But it's only six episodes, so it was a quick watch. All right, cool. But I really enjoyed it, and on top of that, I watched, uh, like you said, Psalm One Hundred Goemon. I did start to i didn't fully want finish it because of things but i started to watch an interview with a vampire oh nice it's it's really good uh i've heard great really things proof, really proves that jacob anderson was like wasted on game of thrones yeah because that man can monologue in a very good way. I mean, and... he he did have a chance to to do a little bit in the. Uh, unfortunately, it was in the final season, but you could tell you could tell Grey Worm had chops. You could tell. Yeah, yeah. and uh, the Lestat that they got is very charming, but also can be very scary. Hmm. I mean. Yeah, that, that's the point of his character. Yeah, Lestat's a character. He is a very charming individual with... In a sense, Interview is more Louis' perspective. Yep. That's yep. really bias. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah, and they address that. Oh, really? That's cool. Yeah, like, uh, unlike... Uh, they spend more time in modern times. Oh, interesting. And you explore more, and you get to know more about the interviewer. Oh, do we, uh, so is the vampire Lolly in this? Uh, Claudia? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and they, they really expand upon her. So is she, but is she a Lolly? In the sense of what? In the sense of she's a child, or she had a child body. Because, like, even in the movie, uh, Kirst- yeah. Kirsten Dunst was a child and was Claudia. Yeah. The... Yep. I... Well, she was turned when she was yeah, a child. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, is she a lolly? The, act- the actress is above age, but the character, I believe, is 14 when she gets turned. Oh, oh, okay. So she got turned older than she did in the in the books and original movie. Okay, mm-hmm. interesting. But I mean, I understand. We go. Mm-hmm. 
we go more into her and explore her more. Really good. And uh, nice, it's nice. leading to some really good places that I can't wait to see where we go from here. But I will let you know more when I finish it. Yeah, I don't have I don't have AMC, AMC so I, unfortunately I haven't been able to check it out. Um, like I said in the news, it's on Max right now. Oh shit! Really? Oh, I'm gonna. Oh, I'm 100 percent gonna watch this. It it's on Max until sometime in October. Good, oh. good, good shit, good shit, good shit. I'm gonna check it out. It yeah. Max, then I need to actually check out and finish. You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, speaking of finishing, Tony, did you do your homework? No, oh, he didn't do his homework, folks. Damn it, Tony. Uh, I'm not the only one who fucked up this week. For 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 those of you who uh you know maybe missed uh, the last episode, Tony's homework was to finally finish the last two episodes of American Born Chinese. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna check back with him next week to see if he Dude. finally does his homework. Do you mean miss the episode that never aired? Uh, no, I said I said the last episode as in the last episode we recorded. Mm-hmm. Like the last episode we recorded. Yeah, oh, wait, that's right. It didn't well, get lost. My bad. Yeah, what's the My Monkey bad. King? Brain fart. I was like brain fart. Come on, Brian. Like, look, I know what I'm talking I about. I know. Real life is a I bit. know. My. I understand, my brain's Tony. Been buzzing. And I've been going through a lot. I've been going through, like, not, like, going through a lot when you say going through a lot, but I just mean, like, with all the news and stuff going on right now, my brain's just fresh. Understandable. Understandable. And I, I, I get you, Tony. I'm, 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 just, I'm just clowning you. I'm just clowning you. Yeah. It's the use. Yeah. It's oh, at the last minute that I can... Oh, God damn it. Uh, it's more like I have it's... to myself because I get... I wrapped up in other shit, trying to figure out what I need to do, and then I'm like, well, fuck. But that, damn it. Tra- nah, transitioning, though, fine. Tony, uh, what uh, what media have you been consuming? Well, let's see, let's see. I've been very engrossed in... Uh, in a, I recently subscribed to a YouTube channel called uh, Hammurabi, mm-hmm. who's made a campaign on... House Torres of Sardinia. Because, uh, like I was telling Jay and Trash off camera, I've been really getting into uh, Paradox Games' uh, real time strategy catalog. Like your uh, uh, Veronica 2s, your Crusader Kings 3. So, essentially, with a Paradox Mega campaign, you start with uh, Crusader Kings. Then you go into Europa Universalis, then into Victoria, and then into Hearts of Iron. In the specific games that uh, Hammurabi, who also is on Twitch, by the way, Mm -hmm. he started with Crusader Kings 3, then into EU4, and he's currently streaming his uh, Victoria 3 playthrough, where a lot uh, happened. So basically, uh, House Torres uh, ruled a province in the north of Sardinia, mm-hmm. which grew through over the course of the mega campaign into a pretty sizable power. So currently, because I just finished a few of the streams because he made them into VODs on his uh, second channel on his YouTube, Mm-hmm. Where he had, for role play purposes, and it really fits because it makes sense historically, where Napoleon Bonaparte led uh, Sar- uh, Sardinia Corsica. Cool. Because for those of you who don't know, uh, Napoleon was born on Corsica. Mm-hmm. So in this particular timeline, he would have been very. He would have been born on Corsica and didn't really get involved in France. He stayed at home on his uh, home turf. So it makes sense for him to actually be 
a noble figure at that time. Makes sense. And actually does Emperor of uh, Sardinia, Corsica. And it's the story as I'm watching it right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's his son, Napoleon II. Cool. Uh, he's a good... Napoleon II is a good diplomat, but a shit tactician. Ah. And so far, like, the roleplay-wise, it is such a fascinating story. Because uh, I looked in the comments, of, especially the Crusader Kings aspect, uh, part of, the, of this mega campaign. The lore that, the lore keeper that really dug deep into, like, the roleplay aspect mm -hmm. of each of the different kings, uh, different leaders at the throughout the course of the House Suarez dynasty in Crusader King. Mm -hmm. It's so goddamn fascinating. I like, mean, uh, as, as someone who, who also enjoys, like, history and kind of, like, the, 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 the backstory of lineages and kind of the legacy that, you know, families leave behind, yeah, I could, I could, see, I could see how that gets really uh, fascinating. Like, yeah. Uh, this lore keeper went into detail, like, they actually made, like, uh, pseudo-historical in this interesting timeline about three different uh, uh, kings in House Taurus's dynasty. Mm -hmm. it, it's called the Three Tragic Kings. It's three kings that are tragic in their own ways. One was just a very unlucky man who was a bit of a bit of a simp. Okay. Uh, but the one that's really important is a mad king, who is comparable to Caligula and Nero in a lot. Oh, so he killed a lot of Christians. No, it's more so how their madness affected their rule. Gotcha. So it's like was it was he like so, super hedonistic like Caligula? No. It was more, I would say more so like Nero than uh, Caligula. It's, ah. it's when you think of crazy Roman emperors, you think of those two. Well, Nero. yeah, yeah, he made he made his horse a senator. Yeah, but he, I say it's uh, comparable to Caligula because he started off ruling in his first couple of years very well, yeah. very intelligent, very cool. Yep. But then an event occurred where he just kind of lost his mind. And uh, it's an inherited trait throughout the course of the family. It's due to a lot of uh, stressors, led to a lot of members of this family just becoming alcoholics. Mm -hmm. As you do. It's, it's such a fascinating thing to really look into. Cool. I mean, I, as someone who is, really appreciates history, like I really suggest you check this out, Jay. Oh yeah, no, I'm I'm de I'm definitely gonna look into this for sure. Uh, you you can you can you can you can you can drop me a link after uh, after we finish uh, the the pod. But yeah, um, so what yeah. else what else have you been uh, checking out? Uh, been also catching up with a few anime that I've been trying to finish. Uh, I've been trying to finish without actually sleeping through a good chunk of it because I watch most shows at weird hours of the day if I'm not working. You know. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm trying to finish an anime called, uh, Romantic Killer. Oh! Based... Oh, yeah, 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 my cousin told me to watch this one. It's a fun little reverse harem show. Basically, uh, a girl named Anzu, mm -hmm. who is just living her best life, loving chocolate, playing video games, and just has a real love for a cat, Momohiki. Mm-hmm. She was just living her life until one day this evil bear wizard thing named Riri shows up, says, Hey, your romance department, you're you kind of suck at the romance department. I'm gonna take the three things you hold dear in your heart and to curb Japan's population problems, you are going to be banned from your favorite things, and we need you to get with dudes. This is another Make Babies Please anime? Yes. Nice. But it's actually very funny because uh, Anzu, as a protagonist, she is trying her best to just get the thing she loves again. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she's 
putting up with a bunch of nonsense, and she, at her core, she's a very sweet protagonist. I mean, look, if if if, if someone do. if someone took away chocolate and video games for for me, I I would do what I needed to do. And Anzu really feels bad for the dudes that are in brawl because of the magic of the bear wizard. Mm-hmm. And uh, it is a fun little show. Yeah, no, this one was on my radar. I just never had a chance to check it out. I'll have to give it a watch. I highly recommend that you check this out, Jay. It's someone who shares a lot of uh, my interests. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. And one I think you might enjoy too, Trash. Yeah, I'll make sure to check it out. Just send me a like the. Okay. Yeah, it's on Am. It, no, it's on uh, Netflix. Oh, okay. It's on Netflix. I'll have to check that one out. Uh, let's see. Also, trying to get caught up on My Tiny Senpai, because I really enjoy that. That's a, show. that's a fun show. My Tiny Senpai is great. It is a wholesome show, folks. And also, uh, the leading lady in My Tiny Senpai, uh, Katose, she is precious. Also, also, internet, shut the hell up. The show is called My Tiny Senpai. She is not a lolly. Leave it alone. <laughs> like, look, it is always folks of the West getting big mad over short girls with big anime titties. Short women can have big titties. Yes, it'll cause them severe back problems, and they complain about it. But... It happens. Yeah. It, it's look, people. It, it and I'm not talking about regular folks at home. Like it, it's those who uh spend their time more so online than touching grass. Yep. Go touch grass. Ah uh, man. It, it it it's not an issue. You make things an issue that are not an issue. Go touch grass. Yep. Go hug your family. They really need to see you. Yep. But point point is, I needed a lot of things to just kind of get my mind off of, you know, real life shit. Understandable. And then, uh, let's, let's see. Else. Just your standard PSA, people. Please just, unless you have to, stay away from Xavier School for the Terminally Online. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm yeah, calling the yeah. app now. <laughs> oh, what else? Oh. Uh. No, is that it? Oh, and I did check out One Piece with uh, on Jay's Discord server, and I finished that up because I didn't want to miss. Which, which, by the way, folks, we are gonna start bringing back, uh, you know, community community watch days. So, if you would like to participate, I I will leave a link to the server in the description down below. Uh, you know, we're always we're always looking for new members of the crew, so uh, check it out. Um, yep. We also have a uh, spicier content uh, for those who subscribe to the Twitch channel, um, but. Uh, and are above eighteen. Of of course. Uh, honestly, you shouldn't be watching my you shouldn't be watching my content if you're below eighteen. I'm gonna be real with you. You know, obviously I can't police it or control it, but I highly advise you have to be over eighteen to to watch my content. Um. Yeah. But yeah. Uh. So. Um. Uh, that brings an end to screen time, which leads us right into trailer talk. Trailer Talk is a segment of the podcast where Brian uh, brings together a playlist of trailers and we, through the magic of editing, come back after a short intermission and give our thoughts on these trailers. So, Brian, uh, tell the folks at home what trailers we will be reacting to this week. Well, first of all, we will be reacting to a uh, 
new uh, network show coming out from NBC called The Irrational. It is Jesse L. Martin's return to NBC because he was for a long time served on the original Law and Order as Detective Green. Yep. And more modern more modern audiences might know him better as uh, Papa Joe from Flash. Yep, Joe West, Iris. Detective Joe West. Iris's father. Yep. yep. And theater people might also know him from Rent. Yep. Man has an amazing but voice. Now he's, mm-hmm. But now, yes, he does. Now he's returning to to uh, network TV in a cop-like show where he actually plays a professor of uh, criminology who is uh, brought in to help solve uh, crimes. But unlike other procedurals out there where it's just like, you're only dealing with the FBI or you're only dealing with the special victims unit of mm-hmm. the cops. Mm-hmm. He is like a consultant that is brought into several different sex sections. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that would be interesting. But uh, even more interesting is a new um, well, British show that is being brought over to America by Amazon Video called Wilderness. And that one is starring uh, Jenna Coleman of Doctor Who fame. Cool. And Sandman. Yep. And Sandman. And uh, I forgot his name now, but the guy who uh, played Luke in uh, The Haunting of yeah, yeah, Hill yeah. House. Mm-hmm. It's the two of them who play a... British, obviously, couple. I want to say Luke. Who, Luke was the uh, Luke was the one that was the drug addict, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, I I thought he I thought I thought that was who I was thinking. He also played the creepy dude in uh, *Bly Manor*. Mm-hmm. But uh, those two are playing a couple who start going through a hardship, so they decide to. Uh, Take a trip to the U.S. Where things get very complicated. Especially, uh... When introduced to, um... I think her name is Ashley Benson? From Pretty Little Liars? Uh, Hannah. Yep. Oh, shit, what? Yep. So I thought with those three people, definitely include that. Nice. And then the last one is obvious if you know us and you've been keeping up with trailers of late. The last one is Godzilla minus one. <gasps> ooh, ooh, Yay! Ooh. That's probably my uh, most looked for. Nice. Two movies. Nice. All right. Sounds like we got some good trailers okay. up ahead. So uh, we will be back. After this short message from the sponsors we do not have. Remember, sponsors, this is where we could insert your ad. But until then, we'll see you in a bit. And we're back. All right, folks, uh, we just got done watching this week's batch of trailers. You can check them out in the playlist down below. Uh, But they were some pretty awesome trailers, if I do say so myself. Uh, What did you guys think of the trailers? enjoyed the trailers this go around mm-hmm. um i gotta say i'm not usually a procedural guy but i'm definitely gonna at least check out the first few episodes of the irrational over on nbc uh yeah it has a very interesting uh, spin uh, mm-hmm. especially because it looks like they're going to be like hearing it next day on peacock or something like that. Oh, cool! So, yeah. I, so I don't have so, to. So I don't have to. What I don't have to fucking record it on my Hulu. Yeah, nice. which is cool. And like you said, don't really get into procedurals, especially nowadays. But it's Jesse L. Martin, and it's like stuff looks interesting and different and new. Which you know, I like. Which you know, what's funny? 
uh like you know people remember the channel from back when i uh you know back when this channel used to be my uh my main channel and i had well you know my restarted main channel where i did tv reviews some of my most popular videos were uh my most popular series that i covered were my network shows the good doctor nice this is us you know uh a million little things which damn i fell behind on that one um mm -hmm. but yeah uh so it'll be nice to have another network show um you know i if i if i if i like it enough i may or may not do a solo video uh if i keep up with it to the point where uh up until when the season ends we'll see yeah um also uh it seems like mostly with procedurals they only do like a 13 ish episode for the first season so if we wanted to cover it here, we might be able to. If it's good enough, well, if it's like I was gonna got say, a good enough through line. Yeah, I was gonna say that that's that's the one thing though is like procedurals are like mm -hmm. case of the week kind of thing, and it's not very conducive to podcast format because like yeah, it it devolves into just explaining every episode. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, mm -hmm. but. Um, but yeah, I am excited for that. Yeah. Wilderness. I'm mad on that one. Like, I am. I want to know what the deal is with the show because the trailer didn't really tell me anything. Well, like I said, it seems from what I heard, the plot is about uh, there, there are a couple in the UK that vacation to the US. To do like a road trip to try to fix their relationship. But along the way they run into Ashley Benson who. Is like a femme fatale type character. And messes things up for them even more so. I mean that makes sense. She she knows how to use a sex swing. We, we, uh, we, we've seen we've seen pictures of uh, her her carrying the box into her and Cara Delevingne's house. Honestly, for me, but, that's something I'm too interested in, but I mean, I was yeah. more interested in like Irrational just because it seemed like it had a mixture of like, uh, like I guess the comedy. And the yeah, comedy yeah, and yeah, that. yeah. I hope that they don't mm -hmm. lean too much into comedy and keep it uh, on track, I guess you could say. It doesn't seem like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what should we call it? Uh, with uh, Wilderness, it seemed like they were leaning more on the fact that they were the debut of uh look what you made me do taylor's version mm -hmm. uh, and even though it wasn't a teaser it felt like a teaser yeah like i said the trailer didn't tell me anything mm -hmm. but mm. which was last but uh oh you you roboted Godzilla. you roboted so you completely froze on my end uh Oh, um, can I be heard now? You can be heard now. Yeah. So Godzilla minus one. Yeah. On the complete opposite end of the spectrum. Holy shit. That's what I was doing. I was trying to do a transition, but technology. Yep. But holy shit, man. Uh, this is probably my last most highly anticipated movie of the year. Like, uh, you know, my, my list of most anticipated movies of the year were TMNT, Across the Spider-Verse, and Oppenheimer. And I've seen all of those. Although Barbie was a sleeper. Barbie was a sleeper. It was a banger. I enjoyed the hell out of and it. To be fair, some of the bigger ones that might have been on the list have been delayed. Like uh, Dune Part 2. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, uh, so this looks amazing. Um, you know, we, we commented as we were reacting to it that it's a much smaller Godzilla, so you actually get to see the whole thing, which actually gives it a lot more impact. Um, I think it was, uh, I, I was watching the video earlier, you know, uh, D-Man ended up saying, uh, mm -hmm. I think he is back to like 50, like a 50 foot Godzilla, so. Oh, nice. It's a, a lot smaller and, uh, I feel like it's a nice change of pace from Shin Godzilla, 
where Shin Godzilla was more of uh, well, I mean, obviously modern, mm -hmm. and a lot more uh, focused on its power set. And I and I did I I did enjoy yeah. the uh, the transformation aspect of Shin Godzilla and the oh, and like the the messaging that Anno put into it. I've honestly really enjoyed all of Anno's uh, Shin movies so far. I have yet to see Shin Ultraman still, but I'm probably gonna Very watch good. it. Actually, very good. I actually watched it. Uh, they don't take it serious. They don't take it too seriously. That's it's good. Very much a campy movie. Good. That's what um, I was hoping for. And you'll see that they they actually keep a lot of um, a lot of like date, dated techniques, I guess that you could see that you would see in the original. Cool. That would actually look funny today, and they use that as like comedy kind of thing. Nice. So it's something to look forward to. Cool. And uh, I've always been a big fan of Godzilla, so uh, ever since I was young, like, so I'm pretty excited for this one. I want to see what they oh, do, yeah. how they do it differently, and it seems like it's back to the 50s. Yeah, it's back to basics. The, mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of the warships are from World War II. And the and um, the set design looks very post-war Japan. Yeah. Yeah. Like I mentioned, they're really reliant. They seem to be a lot more reliant on CG this time. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, but and it doesn't look that great. But as Jay, me and Jay were saying that, it, well, as Jay was saying, it's like pre-production or whatever. Yeah, it's just a trailer. Like I, yeah. I, I, I guarantee you, it'll look better. Cause like, even, 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 even with shit like, uh, even with like, you know, even with shit like One Piece, uh, the CGI in the trailer looked terrible but it looked a lot better in motion in combat oh, yeah. shit even some of the stuff that was in the daytime didn't look as bad as i was expecting some of it was still bad yeah. but you know what it is what it is there there was only one that i thought looked really questionable if you catch my drift uh two but uh, there there are two for me there are two for me we'll talk but, about uh, that soon we can talk more about that later but mm -hmm. yeah for this one I will also admit that we're only seeing the trailer, but from what I've seen, also bravo to the costume department. Oh, yeah. Those costumes look awesome. Oh, yeah. So, Tony, you're also a big Toho fan, so uh, what did you think? Well, personally, for me, it's always good because Toho really wants to just kind of go back to basics with Godzilla mm -hmm. and how... Just to make Godzilla feel real in this day and age. It, or more so like, they don't want to be shown up by their partnership with Legendary, you know? Yeah, which Legendary has been killing it, honestly. Um. Yeah, so they want to make sure that their big guy also gets their t his time in his home country. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And mine is um, really falling back into the Gojira uh, film itself is kind of the more interesting way of going about it. And also really tying in to Godzilla's origin of the atomic bomb being... Yeah, what burst, what burst it, yeah. Or, mm -hmm. or reawoken it, depending on, you know, depending on the film or source. Yeah. I think they're really leaning into the atomic bomb really affecting it because if I have to hazard any guesses, those were nuclear strikes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About it, yeah, it, it was, it was, de yeah, it was definitely, we definitely saw um, the mushroom cloud. So, it, yeah, I, I definitely think that was, uh, you know, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Either that or they yeah. were blowing up the, trying to blow up Godzilla with mini yield nuclear bombs. Mm -hmm. All the because it seemed like Godzilla was scarred. Yeah. Yeah, because I saw a thumbnail saying that Godzilla might be undead or or is dead in that trailer. I'm so the theory that I'm leaning towards is that like the the nukes that you know hit uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki woke him up and damaged him. Which is why he's angry and attacking Earth, and uh, I think the uh, the an interesting angle they could take this is like a Grave of the Fireflies situation, 
if you've never seen uh, Grape of the Fireflies, you should see it. It's probably the second best Ghibli movie for me besides uh, Princess Mononoke. Uh, and Grape of the Fireflies is a harrowing look at post-war Japan and the effects that the destruction of Hiroshima and Nagasaki did and the the fear that gripped the country afterwards and i think it looks like they're really embracing that angle and i think that'll make it a very compelling story which like you know in more modern depictions of godzilla the human characters and the human elements is kind of a b plot and a side thing but i think you know Bringing it more to the forefront for this, especially with setting it in this time period, will actually really work, if done right. Yeah, and also, you gotta strike the proper balance for a good uh, Godzilla movie with the human plot and also the monster fight. Mm -hmm. Or exploring the monster themselves, because Gojira, back in the 50s, was also a critique at that time of post-war and the usage of atomic weaponry and the fear mm -hmm. that many developed nations developing their own atomic weaponry that could lead to major devastation it was a critique on that and yep. then a lot of a lot of those themes that we've seen not only in the trailer but also throughout godzilla's history critiquing the faulty the faults of man and making sure that they want to in a way surpass nature mm -hmm. that integral thing to godzilla yeah whole... yeah Pro probably the yeah. probably the biggest theme of godzilla overall is um you know maintaining the balance between man and nature and godzilla serves as kind of the avatar and guardian of the balance he's only gojira is only awakened when that balance is disturbed uh, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Or would you and uh, mm -hmm. or would you really play with that when he did his uh animated his anime Godzilla trilogy? I fucking loved that and uh Godzilla anime trilogy. That Which one and the one the one that Gen Urobuchi wrote. That one or was did... uh, Planet Godzilla. I'm pretty. Uh, hold, hold on. God... It was with uh, Godzilla Earth. Yeah. As... Yeah, Godzilla Earth. Oh, okay. I think I'm the have... only. I think I'm the one with the opposing faction that I really hated that one. Really? I actually preferred uh, the other one that they made, the series Godzilla Singular Point. Singular. Yeah, Singular Point. I, point. I like see. I like Godzilla Singularity Point as well. That that was pretty solid. I mean, but also, uh, just want to point out here real quick. Mm -hmm. Um animated legendary thing that balances the human and the giant monster uh kong skull island which we did cover yep go check yep. out go check out our audio backlog and legendary netflix give me that give me that dog plushie let me get let me get that baby dog plushie do it also, right I think now. I might have the controversial thing, but I actually feel like Legendary has been dropping the ball with Godzilla. Uh, in my opinion. It, Just because, especially the human characters. Oh, I mean, the human characters suck in Legendary. I will give you that. Um, yeah. Outside of that, I feel like if they wanted to do uh, ki like King of the Monsters, and they should have done maybe something like Destroy All Monsters, where you focus on... The fight between Godzilla and King Ghidorah and the Titans. Oh man! But, I mean, that's just, just something else. Just show, yeah, oh, yeah. The, like show through emotion through the through Godzilla because Godzilla, it's even though you might not think that it could be emotional or you can see the emotions, like you could do that. You, we've already seen it in the Toho. Oh, for sure. If you if you if you go the destroy all monsters route, definitely. But anyways, which like, um, uh, by mm -hmm. the way, I do believe that this year we're also. Maybe still getting uh Kong versus Godzilla? Yeah, Kong, oh, yeah, versus Godzilla Kong versus Godzilla. Kong versus Godzilla too. Uh, Kong and Godzilla, because yep. Kong versus Godzilla was the last one. Yeah, Kong versus Godzilla was the last okay. one. Yeah, they're gonna add and well, Kong, but I'm which, honestly 
not too sure how that's going to end up because uh yeah i mean kong versus godzilla wasn't the greatest but it was it was fun for the most part it was an enjoyable it was an enjoyable kaiju movie and that's for um when i what okay so here's the thing when i kind of rate godzilla movies i rate it with how much yeah i got of it and or, and for me or, oh yeah all right go ahead tony I, or did i enjoy the adversary of the film in question because to this day my favorite all-time godzilla movie is godzilla for spyland nice it will be it will always be my favorite because i found violante as an antagonistic force to be very interesting and i also just love the giant plant monster design i think it's fantastic so having a mech godzilla that to be fair kind of looks booty shorts compared to other great mecha godzilla designs mm -hmm. it wasn't that great of an adversary and to be fair i've seen a much better and more entertaining godzilla versus king kong which i still don't agree with the results yeah i don't think anybody agrees with no one results. agrees with it they pulled the they pulled the whole powers thing out of his butt. Yeah. But uh also um I just feel like uh if you honestly when it comes to like Godzilla even though we can rate it with how much fun we have we do want it to have good writing and have fun. I agree. Uh, that's something we should always look for look for in like we couldn't we shouldn't just put Godzilla under like uh, oh, well, it's fun. It's just fun. I agree, okay. but I also grade Legendary on a curve because it's America and America's interpretation of it and the American values placed within Godzilla very often don't translate well, so we kind of get this... Uh, the, that's where a lot of the lackluster uh, writing choices come from, in my opinion. So I kind of, I grade, I grade American Godzilla stuff on a curve, personally. Yeah, I think it all depends on who you've got running things because uh, I know it's not Godzilla, but it's Godzilla adjacent. I did like the legendary Tom Hiddleston uh, Kong movie. No, Kong is an entirely American invention. Yep. Yeah, I know, but it's the same universe in the legendary world. Yeah. Which yeah. is why I made the connection. It's the same universe as Godzilla in their yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, but the, the 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 so but the the reason that I think the reason that Kong works, right, is because Kong was made as a critique to American society. So Kong always works. For America, whereas like Godzilla and Godzilla's themings are so intrinsically Japanese, where you can yeah. make them work, but a lot of the times, unless your writers really care, they don't translate well. Could I get that? Could you imagine someone like the Daniels doing a Godzilla movie? Oh, from like everything everywhere all at once i could see yep. i could see that being pretty solid um i i'd i'd also take like a guillermo del toro fucking godzilla movie i could see that that i would actually seem very cool because oh yeah he should... he's very good at the the whole heart of the monsters thing didn't he do the didn't he do the Kong or was that Jackson? No, that, that was, was Peter Jackson. Jackson. That was Peter Jackson. My bad. Also, when it comes My to bad. like when it comes to uh, Kong, I feel like I feel like I prefer Peter Jackson's version. Oh, Peter Jackson's version is amazing. Um, yeah. and and that CGI still holds up. Oh, definitely. And also, the like just out of random, the video game actually was. The video game is amazing. I had the DS version. It was fun. So, I never had to be okay. a version, not the Spock version, but anyways, continue. Yeah. So, here's something that I actually just want to ask before we kind of continue this little conversation yeah. further. Just yeah. Okay. Talking about the show we're going to be talking about, about trash. Yes. What's your favorite uh, Toho 
Godzilla movie? Uh, that's a very hard one because honestly, as much as not very many people, I I don't know how I don't know how its reception is, but I do like Godzilla two thousand. I love Godzilla two thousand. It was That's the a... one. It's not. It the... one... It's not just us, Tony. It's not just us. <laughs> it was the one where uh, I um. Well, the first one of the first Godzilla movies I, I same. Seen. And also, I just really like Orga. Its design is really good, even though it's like basically yeah. similar to Destroya. Mm-hmm. And then it's... also, there's a certain other thing why I like it because, uh, but I'm not going to talk about that on this podcast. All right, all right. We yeah, we you could you we could we could we could we could talk about we can bring that we can continue this conversation off camera. But yeah, yeah. Me and okay. me and Tony talked about me and Tony talked about this in our episode for uh, Kong Skull Island. We both love Godzilla two thousand. Uh, yeah, it's a fun fun movie because I have a fun. Experience. It is. I actually saw it in theaters when they did a big release of it, and I saw it with my uh, my grandparents. It was a fun time. Yep. That's the Matthew Broderick one, right? No, that's no, no, no. That that's 1998. Which I unironically okay. actually do like, even though it's horrible. I I I, yeah. I like it in a so bad it's good kind of way. That's a lot of fish. That's a lot of fish. <laughs> uh, look, that's the be- That's the most iconic line from that movie. I just hate mm-hmm. Roland as a director. Well, who doesn't hate Roland Emmerich? Also. The dude, the dude is what his bread and butter is disaster movies. The whole entire thing about Godzilla is the nuance and not yeah he the disaster that he uh, causes to, to to bring it to uh trend to help yes. trend to help transition into it though it's very similar to how Zack Snyder misunderstood Superman and whereas Superman yes. like for him. Is more of the Jesus allegory and being above it all, but Superman is really supposed to be kind of the light and potential for humanity. And uh, you know, my adventure with Superman definitely demonstrates it a lot. Uh, so we're gonna go yeah. ahead and finally get into our discussion proper half an hour later. Um, but you know, so two hours in basically, but- give or take. But look, man, there's a lot of shit to talk about. It's Brian's fault for putting a Godzilla trailer in it because he should have known that even if Trash wasn't here, me and Tony would have probably been able to talk about this for at least 30 minutes. I could probably have yeah. talked about it for longer, but I mean, yeah. we have to move on. Yeah, we do, we have, to, yeah. We do have to move on. Uh, but we yeah. Yep. So we're going to go, uh, so we're going to, you know, talk about my Adventures with Superman, the brand new animated series available on Max and it aired on Adult Swim as well. Uh, but I am now sleeping like a normal person, so I don't I didn't stay up week to week to watch it. I just watched it next day on Max uh, week to week. Uh, it was actually fun uh, because, you know, I haven't watched shows weekly until maybe a couple months ago and uh, this was one of the first ones where i actually like actively watched it week to week and i had a blast like talking about it with tony and trash shoot pretty much pretty much pretty much every week around the time of the episode like trash would hit me up and be like hey have you seen the episode yet it's like, oh, no, 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 I haven't watched it yet. I, I had work to do. And then as soon as I watched it, I was like, all right, I saw the episode. Th- these are my feelings about it. Like, me, me and me and Tra- I, I So I know a lot of Trash's opinions of the show because me and Trash have spoken very in-depth about the show itself. Uh, it's been great. Uh, I, you know, I love superhero media, of course. And, um, you know, as somebody who's grown to really appreciate Superman, uh, this show has done such a great job of doing it. And, you know, I know some people are kind of tired of early years adventures kind of thing, but they put so many twists on, um, like, early year Superman that like it's such a it's actually a very refreshing experience at least for me 
uh being a uh like a long time comic book reader so like yeah i enjoyed it a lot the, the way that i'd uh antiquate the uh changes is it's kind of similar to uh superman and lois where uh they make a lot of changes to the mythos but they keep interesting new changes yeah and they keep the spirit of the character which is the most important part yes but but with my adventures of superman it is animated so they can go further and go places that superman and lois can't because it's live action yep because of budget so um tony Let's uh let's let's go to you. Uh, what did you think, spoiler free wise, of Superman and Lois as uh, someone else who watched it week to week? Uh, you mean my adventures with Superman? Oh fuck! I did it again, didn't I? Yeah, my adventures with Superman. It's because Brian just mentioned Superman and Lois, so it fucking it popped into my head. But yeah, my my adventures with Superman. Uh, uh, you also watched it week to week. Uh, you know the three of us talked about it a lot uh so, but yeah tell the folks at home i really enjoyed what this show did i mean it was more like a definitely a 70 30 in terms of some of the things i enjoyed but so, there's a few things that kind of got stuck in my craw and mm -hmm. i can't quite put on what the issue is, but I just have issues. Oh, we'll get to it. I, 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 I can point out. I can point out some that I had that uh, me and Trash have talked about in depth. Um, but overall, I love the art style. I enjoyed a lot of uh, kind of the general ideas that they're going for. Mm -hmm. Also, I, I want to say if this is like the launching point of the DC anime universe. I'm here for it. Yes. yes, please. Like, let me see a Batman anime. We already saw Vicky Vale, and she's now the editor in chief yeah. of the Gotham Gazette. So, you know. And, and we know someone who would be really good for voicing Batman, who is friends with Jack Quaid. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, just get, get, fr or you know, you could do a boys reunion and have Carl Urban voice Batman like That's I always wanted. Oh, you were? Oh, cool. Yeah. Dude, Carl Urban voicing Batman is something I always wanted to hear, like, ever since yep. I saw Dread. Um, I did, I did see someone make a uh, fan image where they took a image of, uh, of uh, Jack and Carl together, mm -hmm. like behind the scenes, yep, palling around, mm -hmm. and then they did uh, Batman and Superman in that same pose. Nice, nice, but uh, but yeah. So continue, Tony. My bad. Yeah, and it's just a lot of the different angles that they decided to do with uh, some uh, classic Superman villains. Like I really enjoyed. An interpretation of one villain in particular because i thought it was so fascinating that they took a lot of different elements with them mm -hmm. that you never expected but it makes a lot of sense in hindsight i agree i agree and, but some of the others like including a flash villain just randomly yeah i was i was like wait why are you here you're a member of the rogues what the fuck you should be over there with Captain Cold. God damn it! But I, I kind of get it, but also you're like his best friend. What the fuck? And also, this iteration is mostly an OC. Pretty much. But the point still stands. Yeah, no, that's a Flash villain. You don't cr you don't cross the streams, man. At least not this early into your universe. Like, you know, mm -hmm. one of the main anta main recurring antagonists we see is kind of just a shit. Is actually mainly a uh, Batman antagonist, but because of the 
bigger overall antagonist that they placed in the first season. It makes sense for them to be a Superman mm -hmm. antagonist in this situation. So I yep. was I was okay with that. So, but I totally understand where Tony's coming from well, with that perspective, and uh, we'll talk about that more in the spoiler section. Uh, but it's not even... That was just one just... But there's one, like, classic Superman... I would say more so antagonist than actual outright villain. Yeah, he's more of an antagonist. Yeah. The tragic. really enjoy the idea of what they did. Yeah. I can just want to... Because I... Someone who knows anime like I do, Jay. Mm-hmm. Because I want to make sure that my brain wasn't, like, telling me nonsense like it usually does. Okay. That I actually saw what I saw. Okay. We'll get into that later. All right. But, yeah, it's, uh, like, 70% of the time it's it was good. There's that 30% of stuff that's, like, miscellaneous, like, gripes and some concerning, like, annoyances that I have, and that's about it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, Trash, what did you think, spoiler-free-wise, of my adventures with Superman? Overall, um, I'm pretty much, like, uh, I agree with Tony with a lot of the things. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, I felt like the take on Clark Kent and just Superman in general was kind was quite refreshing. Um, the dynamics between uh, Jimmy and, and and Clark were especially. Oh man, this is the best Jimmy we have seen in years. I I, I love this Jimmy, love this Jimmy so much. And Superman and Lois, you could tell that they have a very big chemistry. There are some issues with it. That we'll talk about later. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then also just uh, overall pacing, I feel like they could have switched it a little bit more. Yeah. I feel like it went really fast. Yeah. Uh, I, and... that, that's definitely a complaint yeah. I had a little bit that, like, I wish we had a little bit of breathing room to kind of process things a little bit more. But they only had yeah. 10 episodes, so I get it. And then also some other thing is that I feel like... Uh, some of the decisions made in some of the episodes were a little bit wonky uh and kind of out of uh out of character so but we'll talk about that in spoilers as well but overall i enjoyed it um i'm glad i watched it mm -hmm. i'd probably give it about a 7 out of 10 um <clears throat> okay interesting we usually say, we usually save ratings for the end but all right cool all right so, uh, before, before uh, I'll go last, but last but certainly not least, uh, the most fresh perspective on the show, let's talk to our boy Brian. Now, Brian, would you like to share with the class why you have the most fresh perspective on the show? Audio only, people. You can't see me giving this shit-eating grin to Brian right now, but I'm giving Brian a shit-eating grin. Yes, and... and you can't see Brian giving the biggest face palm at himself. Well, first of all, before we get into this, uh, I got distracted by other stuff, so I didn't watch like, the first few episodes a week of, and then by the time I thought about it, I thought it was too late, and I'd just save it, not knowing in the future that I would we're past the first minute so I can say this fuck up so royally and be engulfed by IRL stuff and the hype train for One Piece that I totally messed up and thought that we were doing One Piece first for some reason which I want to just point out real quick to continue the clown on Brian train for a second. Uh, I want to point out, folks, uh, if you're longtime listeners and or viewers of the podcast, you know that Brian is usually the one who announces what happens <laughs> next because Brian is the one who writes down the schedule. 
Yes, I know. I know. But hey, I was doing I was doing well without any fuck up <laughs> for a while. One had to happen. Oh, I know but that. If that's, you are, that's why I had to clown. That's why I had to clown. If you're a really long time fan and know this deep cut, at least it wasn't as bad as when we did Lost in Space back when this was a YouTube. And it was a live, oh, yes. and it was a live show, and people were waiting for us for like two hours. Like, yo, are you guys gonna go live, or are we? Are, are, did you cancel the episode this week and not tell us? And it's just like, yeah. and I was like, sorry guys, I'm waiting for Brian. <laughs> Brian didn't finish it yet. Yeah, it's been years, but I think also I underestimated the amount of episodes. Like I thought it was eight when really it was ten or yep. some shit like that. And you and I think you also thought they were thirty minute ones and they're actually hour long they were an hour, sometimes over an hour. Uh yeah. Yeah, which Oof. never finished the last season of that. I did. Uh me and my dad watch it. Pretty solid. That's good. Hell of a cliffhanger though. Sucks. Yeah. But, uh, anyway, mm -hmm. uh, so, I had the last minute marathon this, and, uh, I really liked it. Um, getting to the show itself, yeah, it makes a lot of changes to the mythos. Most I liked, some were a little bit weird, but like they said, we'll get into it, but it was really enjoyable, mm -hmm. and... It's nice to see fresh um, take on animated Superman. Like you said, Jay, I hope this is like the start of a established universe. Listen, Superman anime to... universe. Like, come on. DC anime universe. DC, you know this is the one place where y'all kill Marvel. Do yep. it. Yep. Do it. Yep. Mar I mean, Marvel has their whole string of anime, and most of those sucked. So, please, you know who, do it. You know who could easily transfer into an anime style and explores a lot of mythology that anime sometimes likes to to just talk about? And that is uh, Wonder Woman. Yeah. A Wonder Woman anime would be amazing. Are you kidding me? And we get to see, and, and we get to see more anime style waifus with delectable apps. And yes, please. Yes, yes. And I hate and I hate to uh, keep on the the boys train, but Annie. Yep. Listen, if, if we got Tomboy Lois Lane, can we also get Tomboy Wonder Woman, please? Oh yeah. Please. Uh, that that would be great, but especially if it's like she's tomboy in her civilian identity, and then I want to see Wonder Woman in glasses. Yes. Okay. Look, yes. Look, look, look. It's a it's a simple fetish, but it is a fetish I have. Okay. Please grant but, it. Yeah. Um. Just give it to I can us. see all the seeds that they were setting up, and it'll be interesting to see where they take like other parts of the mythos as they explore, mm -hmm. especially that cliffhanger. But, yep. Uh, we'll talk about that later, but overall, I really enjoyed it. Yep. Okay, so with me... Um... I, you know, when I, uh, you know, you guys should know from when I talked about it earlier in a uh, screen time episode when the uh, when the show first premiered, uh, the show's amazing. I really enjoyed it. As a comic book fan, I couldn't be happier with, uh, you know, a new universe being brought to life and this new take. I like that they actually incorporated a power set that I always thought was the dumbest thing to ever be introduced to Superman and actually make it cool. Um, so that's dope. Um, 
I love the I love the twist on the Lois and Clark dynamic. It's refreshing. It waste uh it you know it cuts a lot of wasted time. Uh and although they do still drag their asses, we'll we'll talk about we'll talk about that soon. But uh, you know, overall that relationship for the most part is great. Um and best jimmy ever um you know fun fact uh for those of you who are not avid comic book readers or don't have a superman obsessed parent uh every one of jimmy's conspiracy theories is a reference to an issue of superman's pal jimmy olsen uh which is nice. the most insane and silver age comic you will ever read Jimmy gets oh. transformed into so many different things. He becomes a wolfman three different times through three different methods. Um, Absolutely. Yep. He balloons up at one point. Yep. He also is the first person to... Uh, he's actually the original Elasta, uh, Elasta lad. Uh, or Elastic Boy, I, I think his name was... Ladder boy, it was one of those. Eventually, the, the mantle's taken up by the legionnaire, um, Elastigirl. Not to be confused with the super thick Pixar mom. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. but yeah, uh, like all those dumb adventures are referenced in his like crazy conspiracy theories that all turn out to be true. It, it, it reminds me, it reminds me so much of Usopp. It's, it's great. Um, and uh yeah I, I i like some of the changes i like some of the angles however i feel like they leaned too much on a formula uh which will again you know this is the i guess the the phrase of the night folks but we'll talk about it later uh and like overall i think this show is very well made and you can tell that there was a lot of heart love and creativity put into this show and for that i you know i definitely you know salute the crew behind it for sure uh but that's pretty much all we can say spoiler free wise so this is the point of the podcast where i give the folks at home your customary warning we are about to enter spoiler territory so i'll give you your standard countdown Five, four, three, two, one. This looks like a job for Spoiler Man. All right. All right. Uh, who added the dying seal at the end of the theme music? <laughs> Me. All right. Anyways, now that the spoiler-free people are gone, let's talk about it. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about, just to get this out of the way, because this, because I'll pro, this will probably be the thing that I'm gonna like talk and soapbox and rant about most of the time. Let's talk about Lois uh, and Clark. Okay. Let's talk about yeah. Let's talk about Lois and Clark. Yeah. Okay. So let's get it. So, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm let me let me set this off. First off, I do enjoy the portrayal of Lois. Uh, I, you know, one of the jokes that I had, you know, ongoing between Trash, Tony, and Cap was that like Lois does not look Korean at all. Um, you know, everybody kept saying, "Oh yeah, this is it's so cool having an Asian American Lois Lane." I'm like, she's Asian. I thought she was Hispanic. <laughs> At the very least, at the very least, she's Filipino. Like, what kind of Asian is she? Is she Filipino? I buy Filipino. She's supposed to be Korean. Ka what? Huh? Mm -hmm. Really? Really? Like when we when we meet Sam, she's like Southeast Asian maybe. Yeah, but no, she's Korean. I mean, Sam yeah. looks hella Korean. Like, I buy Sam being a Korean man, but like. Lois? Yeah, no, not really. Uh, like, 
And all right, I enjoy Lois's tomboy attitude and her pluckiness. However, however, she is a pathological liar, a manipulator, mm -hmm. and just a like a a, a paranoid wreck. So. Yeah. Why the fuck would Superman tell you his secret identity when you've been going all when you wouldn't shut the fuck up about? Oh man, I can't yeah. I can't wait to expose all of Superman's deepest darkest secrets. Uh, and she literally says that. Yeah, yeah. straight up. And you're, it, like, and you're mad? And he says, why would you think that I would do that? And you're mad, bro? <laughs> what? When she was going on that soapbox, I looked at my screen. Uh, then I just thought to myself, woman. Like, look, at, at first I was really? on, at first really? I was on her side a little bit. Because I was like, you know, like... You, I, I do believe you should have told her. But then I really thought about it, and I was like, wait, no, why would he tell her? He would tell Jimmy, because Jimmy, ha Jimmy hasn't showed a reason for to, to for Clark to to be like he'd exposed like Clark. Like, yeah, he has the Flame Bird show, but like Jimmy, re Jimmy respects bro code. And that's something we learn later on that makes Lois's even worse yeah honestly. exactly yeah. i don't understand i don't understand she like she was so irrational and yes. like dude for real you're gonna you're gonna fucking self-terminate okay. you're gonna self-terminate in order to get your your boyfriend to reveal his secret to you what well, the fuck that that i kind of get I don't. That I kind of. What? I let me explain. Understand. Let me explain. I think what they were trying to go with that is an homage to, uh, I think it's Superman 2, where in order to prove that he is Superman to her, he looks like he's going to self terminate and then flies up. Yeah. You know why that works? Because he can fly. And he's not in danger. I know. Well, notice what I said. I said what they were trying to do. Like... Try. Like, that's such a... That's such a manipulative... That's such a fucking manipulative tactic. Because yep. you know how much of a good guy Clark is. And you know he wouldn't want you to be hurt. So, to force his hand, instead of letting him tell you like a normal fucking person, you jump off the top of a building like a lunatic. Mm-hmm. What the and fuck is wrong? And then start him about lying to you. Shut the yeah. yeah Why shut, he's carrying yeah, you? Yeah. Shut Whoa. the fuck up, Lois. Whoa. Double standard. Major like, double standard. It's like I knew you were hiding a secret that I was that, and it's like, and then she constantly she like she tries to. It seems like she tries to like um what's it called. What's that word? She um, tries to gaslight Clark. Gaslight him, she, she, that she, she, and the problem is, is that he actually believes her. And no, and wrong. and that's the thing that pisses me off. Like, you know, nor normally, normally I don't agree with Cap on this type of stuff, but like, mm -hmm. man, he, he, she like gaslit him into thinking like, oh man, maybe I did do the wrong thing. No, Clark, you're not in the wrong. She's a crazy like, person. Okay. Like, look, gentlemen, and I think Jay and Trash can agree with me on this, and I'm sure you do too, Brian, but when I look at Lois's behavior, it, it it's definitely a daddy issues thing. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Oh, thing. yeah. And it's oh, like, oh, oh, yeah. Look, baby girl, I know you want to, like, be the hotshot reporter, but you're stuck in baby jail for like at least fifteen more years. Right. <laughs> really learn how to 
like people were like this back. like this is the this is the most unhinged lowest lane i've ever seen which makes it both entertaining and extremely frustrating to watch her do shit yeah, yeah. you can uh, definitely understand why uh the Council of Lois's? Is, is that what they call themselves? The Legion yeah. of Lois Lanes, which, by the way, uh, all right, we, uh, let me let me talk about that real quick. That is the dumbest fucking concept. Like, Lois does not deserve, especially with this universe, Lois does not deserve to be elevated to this level. <laughs> You're telling. But, well, see, that's the thing is that she didn't. That's the whole. Point. I understand, but like you did, you didn't need to bring in this concept at all. You could have, yeah. uh, you could have honestly did the same plot line with the Legion of Superheroes, and it would have still worked. Which, by the way, I did like that they reference, uh, the Tim verse, Lois Lane. They oh, yeah. best Lois they Lane. Best animated yep. Lois Lane. Um, okay. We're at this point talking about that particular episode. Jay. Mm -hmm. Did Mitzi not look like he came straight out of Dragon Ball? He did! Oh, definitely. He, lo yeah. he looked like a Dragon Ball character 1,000%. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, uh, especially, especially in his, like, transformed state when he has the hat. Yeah. Oh yeah. I love. I thought um, it was a fun way of interpreting I, Mitzi. I I I love. I and I love that they incorporated the dumb little hat because the whole episode I was like, "Where's his stupid little hat?" Yeah. Yeah. Um. It's, when he does transform, though, I can also see maybe some influences of uh, of a uh, Demon Slayer. Uh, yeah. A little bit, but more of a Dragon Ball. Oh my. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Especially, especially all all the the goofy uh, all the goofiness, and besides, all all, all modern shonen are Dragon Ball babies. Um, it, fair, fair. Which uh, speaking of uh, Dragon Ball babies, just real quick, am I the only one who saw the uh, My Hero influences in the animation? I mean. There, I mean, there, uh, there. I would kind, I would actually say that kind of in reverse, because uh, my hero definitely took a lot of stuff from Superman in terms of animation. Well, uh, like, like Superman. I meant like with the eyes and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I could, I could totally see that. Um. But yeah, uh, back back to shitting on back Lo to Lois. yeah back to shitting on Lois. <laughs> let's continue. Let's continue to dog on Lois because like God damn it. Um, also, I I don't like that they keep like they kept backsliding her like oh she finally understands she's finally not gonna be a bitch and then they introduce the fucking sphere thingy. And it's like, oh no, is Clark gonna be- No, bitch! He's not gonna be evil! Yeah. What the in, fuck? In, in Hollywood, can we please get rid of this overused trope of, okay, so no more secrets, immediately keeps a secret. And also- um, As- as someone who can now call himself a Superman fan, I am sick and tired of evil fucking supermen. Put it oh, away. Yeah, <laughs> Put it away. Uh, it's not cool. No one ever has a creative idea about it. Yes, Homelander is popular, but that's because of the actor's performance. Homelander as a character is terrible. It's why the comic sucks. Anthony Starr is his name, I believe. It is, yes. But, but yeah, I I get that. And, um, Young Just, I mean, not Young Just, Injustice, Injustice did it well, but then kept going. I would, I would say I don't think they did it well. They, they, they're, they're, uh, Injustice, and in, Injustice, Injustice Superman is terrible. 
shit. Everyone in Superman's regime in that first game is garbage. Oh yeah. Like also, I think, uh, I think the only evil Superman I I kind of liked was I think it was Ultraman, right? From well, yeah, because uh, that that yeah. was his, that was his function. Ultraman is great. But yeah. like, but there's all you can only do so much with an evil Superman, and Ultraman did everything. So the fact that people keep going back to this well that has been dry as grandma pussy, like, ugh. yeah. Also, they should already know that since even though there's infinite, like I guess since there's infinite universes, there's infinite amount of good Superman. Too, exactly. So. What the? And also, f yeah. also the, the the Lois Lane who founded it wasn't she from like the 1930s? Super yeah, right? she, yeah, she was so from he, yeah she, the, she was from the original cartoon. Yeah, he was the ultimate like goody two shoes. That's what I'm so. saying. I don't get it. And because and well, we, and and we can tell that Prime Lois believes in Clark. So I don't understand yeah. how these motherfuckers and that they're dumb. That's the point. It was said. It was said by Mitzi himself that the prime Lois would not like the current yeah. Legion of Lois. Listen, fuck those bitches, man. <laughs> the only also, cool one was the gym, the, the girl gym. Oh, man. yeah, Jelena. Jelena's dope. She's a bro. Yeah. She, flame bros for yeah, life. She, she was talking she about was. Comet the Super Comet the Super, the super horse. horse! Oh, my God! I, you know, so I I'm so happy that it happened because I have been talking about Comet the Super Horse to these guys for like weeks, just like, explaining mm -hmm. how weird and wacky that shit is. So oh, I'm I love that I, I'm I'm it's gonna I'm gonna go into a, a, a tiny bit of a nerd deep dive tangent real quick just to just to give you guys a tiny taste of the zaniness of silver age superman so Go right off, King. comet Go the off. super horse is a is a man from venus i believe it's either venus or jupiter who gets transported to uh like who gets flung back in time to to the past where he ends up in ancient greece with the witch Cersei, or Kirky, not to be confused with the Kirky that is the antagonist to Wonder Woman, they they make that very clear, and then Kirky turns him into a horse. And part of Kirky's curse is that he can only turn back into a man when uh, a certain comet passes, uh, like passes by the uh by the Earth every hundred years or so, um. So mm -hmm. keep in mind that this dude is a man who was turned into a horse, right? Okay, so fast forward to 1955, right? Uh, uh, through means that I'm not going to go into because it's a whole story, uh, Supergirl and Superman rescue Comet the Super Horse. And Kara adopts Comet as a pet, thinking that Comet is just a regular horse. Now, Comet... Uh, because of his alien physiology, has telepathy. So he can read Supergirl's mind and stuff, and he ends up falling in love with her. And, you, you know, you think it's this kind of tragic thing. Of, you know, he loves her, but he can never be with her because, you know, he is but horse. He can never be man again. Well, that's where you're wrong, folks, because Superman always deals with weird, wacky magic shenanigans because that's one of his only real weaknesses. And... Through weird, wacky, magical shenanigans, Comet gets blasted with magic and turned into a man again. Uh, then he takes on another alias, uh, becomes a rodeo champion, and then woos Supergirl, only to break her heart and make her believe that he ditched her, when in reality... He just turned back into her best friend, the super horse. And then later on, she like the, the actual comet that like reverses the curse temporarily passes by the earth because it's been a hundred years or so. And he turned into a man and he decides to tell 
Supergirl his secret that he is that guy. I don't remember his human alias off the top of my head. And uh, Kara's like, wow, man, I love you, uh, Comet. Uh, and it, so Supergirl ends up dating a horse for like several years because you know he can't stay a man forever and so she just dates a horse i'll i'll, I'll let you fill in the blanks with your own imaginations there <laughs> have, have fun with that one artist but i'm not gonna look at it uh but yeah that's comet the super horse thank you for coming to my ted talk all right. I'm so well, glad um, I have that information now. You're welcome. Back to the Legion of Loises. How? Uh huh. Oh, I thought Trash was saying something, but um, oh, yeah. Just <laughs> no. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay. Just to finish what I was saying, though. That Legion, like, they act like Superman is the worst thing ever. I don't get it. I don't get it. When when it's obvious that more often in the multiverse he's good than evil. You have. But because. You have references to, like, Superman the Animated Series and shit. So you know Clark is good. But in some versions... He's evil, so on the possibility that he's evil, you're not going to trust him, even though you actively know that Mr. Mixapetalik is a liar and manipulator. And you, and you know, by your own stupid ass backwards logic, some of y'all are evil too. In fact, in some universes, some of y'all are evil and team up with the evil Superman. Or sometimes, some of y'all are evil, team up with the evil Superman, and then bang Owlman behind his back. And then also bang evil Lex Luthor, who is also that universe's Shazam named Mazaz. And there's a whole big deal about baby mama drama because crime syndicate Lois is a hoe. Now that I think about it, yeah. basically those Loises are all Amanda Wallers. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. It's just it's frustrating. Like, I want to like Lois's character. And I do. In in the moment where she's well, actually sweet and a good person. But she has yeah. so many moments where she is just terrible. I really mm -hmm. hope they fix that in season two, at least. Yeah. At least have her grow up a little bit. I, 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 I hope she faces more consequences. She didn't face enough consequences this season. Yeah, no, really did because not. like Tony said, she should have faced like Seven years or whatever Tony said. Yeah, in baby but jail. Instead, he got promoted. Instead, what the fuck? <laughs> she got yep. everything she wanted. She got her boyfriend. She got promoted, and she didn't have to leave. It, do any consequences? And Clark got hurt. And and her it. and her and her dad actually listened to her. Like she won. She won. She's not gonna mm -hmm. learn anything. Ah. <laughs> mm -hmm. <sighs> It's so frustrating because I don't want to agree with the narratives that a lot of fans say where, you know, th they never they never let women be the bad guy in this type of show. But, like, it's true here. I can't deny it. Well, they can if her name's not Lewis because... Yeah. The Task Force X has plenty of women in it. Well, yeah, but, you know, the wall... If you don't make the wall a total bitch, you're not doing it right. Um, yeah. Yeah, but it also seems like some of them were just doing it because they wanted to. Mm -hmm. Like, Livewire. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, but yeah, so now that we're done shitting on Lois, uh, let, let's, uh, let's go ahead and, uh, talk about some of the other villains, since we talked about the biggest villain of the show. Uh, Although maybe we should talk about the, oh, I mean, I was gonna say maybe we should talk about the... Oh, 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 the good? 
Um, yeah. All right, so let, let's talk, let's talk about the good characters before we talk about the villains. All right, so <laughs> let's talk about Best Boy, Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen. Mm -hmm. Uh, my guy, my fucking guy. So first off, I like that this is a more like realistic take on the whole content creator trope. Um, like, you know. If I was if I was a content creator covering this shit, like man, you you don't know how quick that shit would blow up. Um and you know, kudos to Jimmy for for making that big acquisition sale to the planet. Now he's like super rich. I love mm -hmm. how like nonchalant he was about it and th at Thanksgiving. Just like, oh yeah, my news was uh I sold Flamebird to the Daily Planet for five point six million dollars. I'm super rich now. Please pass the amps. Yes. And everyone's just like, Nande? Pa pass the pass the yams indeed. And I, I love I love Pa Ken. Jimmy, you know you all you were always my favorite, right? Yeah. This this for mm -hmm. well, let's finish talking about Jimmy before yeah. we move on to other characters. Yeah, yeah. But but yeah, not nonsense. I think. Uh. Das, have we seen a really good Jimmy? Oh yeah, S -tas, S Tas was the last. It was the last time we got a true blue Jimmy Olsen. Um, mm -hmm. I don't. I don't count that one time in Smallville where Iceman played Jimmy. That wasn't really Jimmy, and it was canonically not really Jimmy. It was Jimmy. It was Jimmy's younger brother, who was also named James for some reason. I don't know. It was weird. Which, speaking of James Olsen, he was not bad in Supergirl, but he wasn't Jimmy. He was James. Yep. Completely different character. But this, this was true blue Jimmy. I, I, I loved him. I loved his conspiracy nut personality. I loved his mm -hmm. high energy. He never got annoying. In fact, he was the voice of reason for all this bullshit that was going on between Lois and Clark, which, like, I'm with you, Jimmy. I'm tired of this crap. Yes. And he was actually, just, like, really cool with just everyone, honestly. Even with, uh, who was it? The other reporter. Yeah, yeah. Steve. Steve uh, Lombard. Steve. Yeah, oh. he was, like... He, he the goat. Like, like hated him, but then he's like, he you understood. Know what? You're actually really freaking cool. The goat, Steve Lombard, man. Uh, which, by the way, I love the fact that we get to use iconic Daily Planet characters that were all, all the iconic Daily Planet characters that were introduced in the '80s. Steve Lombard, Cat Grant, uh. Oh man! Although I wish Cat was their age, so we could have that. Like, I'm into Clark, and I actually treat him like a person. Like, but oh well, oh well. Um, I mean, that could still happen, even though. I mean, yeah, she 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 could milf it up. She could milf it up. I'm I'm not I'm not mad at it. She did kiss Clark on the cheek when he when uh when uh the three of them got promoted. You know, who knows? She could want to take him under her wing. Adada. Adada. Oh man. And uh, bringing it back. Speaking of minor characters, uh, Pa Kent was great. Oh, uh, Pa Kent is uh, is fantastic. He was he was different than any Pa that we've ever seen. He's more, also he's more comedic, which I I, I appreciate. Mm -hmm. Um, it's it's pretty fun, but you can tell he still has that genuine heart, uh, which is important yeah. for Jonathan. Um, oh no, Tony disappeared. Oh no! Oh man, Tony got sent to the Phantom Zone. Uh, I, I know he was trying to say something. With yeah. Him earlier. Audio only people you don't know, but Tony Tony got sent to the Oh he's back from the Phantom Zone! Welcome back from the Phantom okay. Zone, Tony. Sorry. It's okay. Were well, you were gonna say something too, Tony? 
I forgot what I was about to say, honestly. The Phantom Zone does that to uh, you. Pocant or... Uh, oh, yeah. The... Pocant was quirky old man. Yep. Loved him. Uh-huh. Yeah. I honestly think and... it works. It does. It definitely mm -hmm. does. He kind of reminds me of a less unhinged version of Gordon's Harley Quinn. Oh, yeah. Without the alcohol. Yeah, yeah, without the alcohol. He just, he just sustained himself, uh, he just sustained himself on Ma Khan's famous rhubarb pie. And the thing Which, is, he, uh, just, he just obviously cares about everything. Oh, yeah, and for mm, sure. That's probably, like, uh, it's just, it feels mm. so, like, nice to yeah. finally have, and he's not, like, stupid either like, yeah not the stupid dad trope either. yep and and also he's not a hard ass uh which i i appreciate um yeah we didn't, didn't we get to see... Sorry, i was just gonna say we get to see a little bit of uh of uh where uh clark got his like bit of a goofball type oh, oh yeah essence. for sure for sure um, and he didn't tell Clark to not save children in, in, in a bus. Oh my god. Oh, I'm still yeah. I'm still upset. Still <laughs> I am tight. I am fucking uh but but anyway from oh from Pa to Ma. Oh, and uh just kind of a side note about the Kents. Uh I don't know if you guys noticed, but uh, you know, as a as a comic book guy uh, I I took I took a chance to like pause the episode when we uh during the Thanksgiving episode to to look at the pictures on the wall, and I love that we see pictures of Lana Lang and Pete Ross on the wall. So I want Lana to show up just to show Lois what a real girlfriend. To Clark should be like. Yes. Because, like, Lana Lang is Superman's original girlfriend. She knew his secret. She kept it. She never told anybody. She never even told him that she knew. Because she's the best. And I'm glad that she's married oh. to John Henry Irons. Oh, shit. Uh... I was just curious because their voices sounded familiar. Mm -hmm. uh, Ma is Saber. Oh, shit! Is she? Yeah. Dang. Uh, Saber in Fate Zero, Fate Stay Night, Ultimate Blade. Oh, wow. she, oh, Fate. oh, she's UBW. She's UBW Zero Saber. Unfortunately, she got fired yeah. and replaced by an actual British person. But oh, shit, she's Saber. Huh. That is really cool. Honestly, like, Moth Cat was just freaking super sweet. She's and... the sweetest lady. Now I want to hear uh... Moth Cat yell Excalibur. Well, <laughs> she was sweet, but also had her own little bit of quirky dark side. I, like, I love the fact I... that she dated General Lane. I love that shit. No matter what he says about your perfect son. But and she's like the ultimate but, defensive mom. Yeah. I do love though that hating him was her big secret. Yep. <laughs> oh man. Uh she's like, I don't want to be a hypocrite. I told I told Clark to, you know, turn him into a friend, but I hate this guy. <laughs> oh man. Yep. So and good. I'm tired of everyone throwing their drama on me. Yep. Wait. Which it's fair because everybody dumps their drama on Jimmy in this show, and it's so unfair to mm -hmm. Jimmy. Like but that also just shows how much people trust him. How much of a yeah. good, how much of best boy he is. Shit. He he yeah. he earned the trust of two of DC's most iconic villains. Fucking the brain and Monsieur Mala, which I love the interpretation of the brain and Monsieur Mala as a gay couple. That is that was that's yes. fucking that, that was, was that was fucking brilliant. Yes, and I love that they were 
They didn't have. They didn't. Really? And, and they really? did, yeah, they were. They were just mad scientists. Like they definitely were. Like yeah. yeah, we did evil shit. We definitely did evil shit. We still do evil sometimes, but for the most part, we live a life of peace. Yeah. But yeah. They, they, they didn't try to. They didn't like immediately Jimmy do anything. To yeah. They just like. Man, Mala. Yeah, Mala's treatment of Jimmy was just so good. So good. Um, it was great. And I love that, the, you know, they never say out loud that they're gay. Like, it's just, the, the you know, they, they, they hold hands, they, they call each other my love and stuff, but they never, like, yeah. make a big deal about announcing, yeah, we're gay, we're totally gay, do you get it? We're gay! Although, although, mm -hmm. they do get a little bit degenerate, or would you say degenerate if it's robot, but they hold hands. They do. It's uh, no. I still count it as degeneracy. It was ungloved. Yeah. There were no black bars. That that was that, that's a that's a misstep on you. Um, my adventures with Superman people. You should have censored that. Yeah. Especially because that was interspecies as well. Extra taboo. Mm-hmm. I'm just glad that they got their happy. End. And then most of it was just because, like so, a lot of it was. Also because of the government, yeah, that tried to murder them all. Yeah, fucking Lois's dad and the wall. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, but yeah, so Jimmy, Jimmy's fantastic. The complete opposite of Lois. Best character. Please. So obviously, we're, we're uh -huh. always gonna come back to Jimmy, like throughout this whole yep. thing. I oh yeah. You. Oh yeah. Please introduce Lucy Lane. So that Jimmy can be happy with the actual good and make Lucy the good one. Yes. Make Lucy the good lane sister. Break tr break and, tradition and don't make her the wild child. Make her the good one. Lois already sucks. And please, dear God, do not make her a cult member. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah, please no. Not again. Yeah, definitely not. Yeah. Uh, that is arguably the worst version of Lucy ever. Hundred thousand percent. Look, that Superman and Lois is a fantastic show, but even they have their big L's. It, you know, one of them is fucking I'll uh, Jor L, Jor L Jr., A.K.A. Voldemort. He's a massive L, mm -hmm. and. You know, Lucy Lane wasting a, an actress who is perfect casting for Lucy Lane. Mm -hmm. And you just. And. Her, you just was make. Perfect for the time they did use her in Supergirl. And she was great when they let her be normal. And then they ruined it. But they're fixing it. So hopefully we'll get to see her more. But that's another show for another time. But yeah, please introduce Lucy, uh, especially if you're gonna follow with the uh, the um, super um, Superman the best pal Jimmy Olsen thing. Because so the running gag for both Superman's girlfriend Lois Lane and Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen is that, well one for Lois is one. It's that Superman uh, Silver Age Superman is a complete jackass and. Emotion constantly emotionally manipulates Clark uh, Lois in the honestly in the same way that this Lois emotionally manipulates Clark and he refuses to marry her and he just leads her on for like years. Uh, uh, by the same token, in uh, Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen, uh, Lucy Lane does the same shit to Jimmy where she keeps making excuses as to why she won't marry Jimmy even though Jimmy's the fucking best. Um, Nice. So but I I would like also, to see Lucy Lane. Mm -hmm. To your uh, well, I just thought about something that enforces your uh, your request mm -hmm. is in this version. Like Mixie said, "Oh, you're the fun Lois," and the the uh, I keep forgetting their name. Legion of Loises. Yep didn't want her that makes me think that they might be going to the fact that since she's the wild child oh my god yes we finally have straight laced like good girl lucy lane 
Oh, I want to see. I want to see it. I want to see it, and I want her to be precious along with Jimmy and get to make my boy Jimmy happy. Uh, because Jimmy deserves it. If anyone in this entire universe deserves happiness, it's our boy Jimmy Olsen. And yep. Clark. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Clark! And Clark! He d Honestly, this is, this is one of those universes where I actually support uh, Clark getting with Lana or with Wonder Woman. Like, you could well, you could do either of those, and I would be more happy than the lowest pair. You know, mm -hmm. there's one love interest that everybody forgets about. Oh, which I would love. Oh man, if they introduce Lori Lamiris, oh man, Lori Lamiris would be great. Uh, for those of you who don't know your obscure super uh, Superman Silver Age lore again, Lori Lamiris is a mermaid that Superman had a dalliance with in his early mm -hmm. days. And uh, he almost became king of Atlantis uh, because he was fucking Aquaman's sister, I guess. Well, also <laughs> for people, if that doesn't ring a bell, her other name might. Dolphin. Yep. The, uh, the, uh, the, Aqu the regular Aquaman supporting character who is... Who is actually Aquaman's sister? So yeah, Clark did fuck Aquaman's sister. Huh. Uh, she also, by the way, harking back to a previous episode, but this was before we did the Spotify. Young Justice introduced a version of her as an adopted uh, daughter of, she, uh, of the yeah yeah no, well an adopted daughter of the uh, yeah. Yeah, of Garth Aqualad, yep. Uh, which which is good, which is great. But yeah, Lori Lori Lemuris, man. Uh, because Superman has mm -hmm. a Superman has a fetish for double L's, which is why I think that like secretly Lex Luthor wants to bang Superman. Wait, you're talking? You're saying that it? You're saying that that's secret? Yep. <gasps> Uh, I mean, mean kind of I mean, it, it's it's secret to most people. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, and you know, you know, hate banging is a thing. Hundred percent. And Lex definitely okay. Lex wants to Lex wants to hate fuck the shit out of Superman. Um, but that's a Which, that, that's a whole other podcast. I hate I hate the fact that in this show he's. Just a skinny little bastard. I so I bald. No, 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 no. But look, man, you got to think about it, right? The origin of Lex Luthor. If you go back to dumb, I'm gonna keep bringing up dumb Silver Age fun facts. The he origin. Uh, well, no, 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 no. But the reason, the reason, Lex hates Superman from the Silver Age is because Superboy dumped accidentally dumped chemicals on Lex's head and forced him to lose his hair and because of those chemicals he was never able to grow it back and so he developed a lifelong hatred of Superman and vowed to destroy him for ruining his perfect beautiful red hair. <laughs> yes, sorry. I know. Yes, I know. It's so it, it, but my point is when we see Lex in this universe, skinny little fuck. I mean, he also got sh dogged on by fucking Ivo. You got Ivo of all people. You you got you got to build you got to build up to you got to build up to Luther, right? Like I know I know you got to build up to Luther, but at least you don't treat little proto Luther like he's a nobody. But I think that's the I, I think that's what they're going for, right? That they're, they're trying I to that that for I'm just yeah. disagreeing with what they're trying to go for. No, I, yeah, I get it. Uh, but, but like I, I I don't know. I personally like the fact that they're paralleling like early Clark's growth with early Luther, so that yeah. like by the time Clark becomes real Superman, we'll get that real Lex Luthor who's connived his way to the top and. You know, built his own ivory tower of look how big my dick is. I'm the biggest boy in Metropolis. Also, if he is, 
less on the physical side, you know what that means is more of a potential. He's gonna need his cancer suit. Yup. Or which uh Sorry. Yeah. I was just gonna say we already know that uh there was already with him a mech like thing, so Yep, he's definitely gonna build the cancer suit. But you could also just have uh -huh. him exercise and stuff till. Yeah, gets, like, that's what I, that's what, that's what I'm saying. If he, he, I guarantee you, he'll get thrown in jail or something, and then he'll just fucking hit the yard and get jacked. Because that's the thing about I think I think it's better just to have Lex Luthor come out later because then you could put more. Uh, I guess you could say more uh, different villains than just Luthor. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 yeah. It, it, I, it's 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 why. Villains. Mm -hmm. It's why uh, that if they fun. introduce Batman to this universe, I want them to mm -hmm. really hold on to the Red Hood because you yeah. don't do the Joker for Proto Batman. Proto Batman yeah. can't handle the Joker. The real Batman is the only person that can handle the Joker. Oh, yeah. And also, um, I hate to bring it back, but we're obviously going to make the parallels because they're both Superman shows. Mm -hmm. Even in um, Superman and Lois, in that world, this is a minor spoiler, but in that world, he's established as having a history with them, but the show itself doesn't address Lex until the later part of season three. Yep. And he is absolutely terrifying. Uh, fucking greatest live action Lex Luthor performance I've seen in a long time. Uh, Definitely. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. So, you know, I, I'm interested to see what comes of Lex in the future. Uh, so, now that we've talked about the good characters, the side characters. Oh, real quick, I want to mention Perry. Perry's great. I love Perry. Yep. Um, not really much to say. I also love his dynamic with Vicky Bale. And, uh, we didn't mention it because they were such a small role, but I did like the small parts that we got with Ronnie. Yep. With Ronnie. The third uh, of the, of the older reporter trio. Yep. Man, I... I, I I hope I hope we get more of I hope we get more of Cat and Steve, especially Steve. Steve really grew on me. Yeah, he did. Fucking Goober. Mm -hmm. He's the one that I'd say more reminds me of uh of uh, Jim Gordon from. Oh yeah, Harley Quinn. He's a fuck, and, and the, the fact that he's like a flame bird troll was hilarious. And he even got yeah. Jimmy to do it for him. Yep. <laughs> the fact yeah. that he's and his trolling, uh, his trolling was just to say nah. Yep. Not. Not. And one of the biggest things is that even though he finds out that he's Flamebird, yeah, he messes around with him, but he feels like it feels like they actually have a nice dynamic. Yeah, they respect each other as content yeah. creators, yeah. which is dope. I l I love that. Gives him that little wolf at the end. To which say, it, congratulations. Yeah, cub. Uh, which is and I, I love mm -hmm. their little mentor mentor student dynamic. It's like, oh, you're the Steve. I want to actually know the history between that trio. Like, I'm intrigued now. Like, yeah, because they do their little anime they extravagance. Ha they have a fucking. And then Ronnie's like, yep, just just do that. I have to do this? Y yes, you have to do a Ginyu Force pose. We practice this. <laughs> Fine. I'm Ronnie. I do so and so. Ron Ronnie, uh, uh, crime, uh, crime, uh, crime uh, investigation and financials. Uh, one, one other thing I love is also whenever Jimmy, whenever Flamebird is mentioned, the freaking crow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So mm. I, I love that sound effect. Um, but yeah, man. Okay, so let's talk about the villains. Uh, so one of the things I don't like is the fact that everything comes back to Kryptonian tech. I think it mm -hmm. robs 
it robs the show of creativity a little bit i mean there are creative twists right but some of the origins for superman villains are really cool so for example mm -hmm. right silver banshee i hate that she's tech based absolutely hate it because silver banshee's story is the fact that um chiffon is a is the eldest female member of a particular irish clan who is cursed to have the oldest female of any, every generation transform into a banshee. And that's her whole thing. The reason why she, were, you know, her powers work on Superman is not because they're Kryptonian tech, it's because they're fucking magic. And it, it's really cool. And they even show her family with her brother who is a carrot who is missed in the comics but guess what his powers also come from you guessed it fucking magic yep and it's not he can go invisible yep it's uh... Which, uh, by the way though fun fact the uh the dude that plays Kyle mm -hmm. missed mm -hmm. Lucas Lucas Gabriel. From High School Musical? Yup. Oh shit! My guy, Ryan! Uh, he was so gay, I loved him. Mm -hmm. Which, uh, by the way, a little bit of a spoiler alert for High School Musical and Musical Series, they finally canonically confirm it. Yeah, that was nice. Um, but, um, what was I gonna say? So, uh, also, just a random fun fact about Silver Banshee in terms of, um, in, in modern comics right now, in the current run of Superman, uh, guess what? Uh, Silver Banshee is actually a, uh, independent, um, uh, like an independent, um, music star. She, uh, she, you know, she, she moonlights as a musician. And you know who she's currently in love with right now and engaged to? Who? None other than Superman's best pal, Jimmy Olsen. Oh, nice. Yeah. Dang, seems like Jimmy's getting around. Listen, Jimmy, look, Jimmy's the man, bro. Jimmy's the man. Um, Dude, in the comics, Jimmy has had tons of uh, girlfriends. More than Superman, but you know, Superman has very a very specific fetish. If you, if if you don't have two of the same yeah if you don't have two of the same initials he's not gonna fuck with you and the reason wonder woman works is because wonder woman has the same initials wonder woman uh, he doesn't count diana prince he counts wonder woman because diana prince is a made-up name uh but yeah uh so i hate that silver banshee is kryptonian tech the other one and this is the one i probably hate the most I hate that they combined Dr. Ivo with the Parasite. Dr. Ivo makes the Amazo robot, which, by the way, should not be a Superman bad guy. He is a Justice League bad guy. Because you know why? Because the Amazo uh, bro, uh, android is supposed to copy the powers and abilities of the entire Justice League, which is why he's scary, which is why Batman develops all those contingencies so that he can deal with all that shit and leads to a whole thing. And then also, also, actually, actually, like, the Amazo robot leads into Ivo's good friend Tio Maro into trying to one up his rival frenemy by making his own evil android the Red Tornado who eventually becomes a member of the Justice League like I hate it I hate I I I like the fact that they turn him into Elon Musk uh like I think it was funny and if they had just stuck with that and just made him the tech guy, totally fine. I hate the fact they turned him into Parasite because the thing about Parasite is Parasite is supposed is he's not a villain. He is a tragic 
antagonist, uh, very similar to uh, Spider-Man Electro, where, uh, and actually it's literally the exact same story, where they're both janitors who end up getting shit spilled onto them because uh, crossfire of a superhero fight, and they get fucked up powers they can't control, and so they hate the hero for it. It takes away from the tragedy of Rudy Jones, um, and it doesn't make you, like, care about the parasite at all. Like, he's just kind of a tech douche. Which is dumb. Yeah, in... Yeah, because I was expecting, kind of, at first, for them to just say that he started off as the tech. But then the tech, like, got a better of him, and so it would still somewhat keep the tragicness. But no. <laughs> nope. He's just kind of a douche. Um, He's kind of a douche that uh, was boosted into being a full douche once his tech, like, made him crazy. Yep. And, uh, okay, um, also a another villain that I don't like... Uh, we alluded to it earlier in the spoiler-free section. Why the fuck are you stealing Flash villains? Like, mm -hmm. Flash's villains are like one of his only like major selling points. Flash and Batman have the best rogues gallery in the DC, uh, in the DC universe. Why are you taking Fla one of Flash's core villains? Like, if it was somebody minor. Like Abracad uh, Abracadabra or yeah. something, sure. But Heatwave, Captain Cold's right hand man, or you know, I guess in this case, woman yeah. would be woman. But like, yeah. no, come on, dog. And it's Even though her name is still back. Rory, which works because Rory is also a girl's name. Oh, true, Gilmar girls. Yeah. Yeah. But uh. Yeah, like, she doesn't really have her own personality, either. Yeah. She's kind of just like the brute force. Person. Which, to be fair, Heat Wave doesn't have that much personality, either. Heat Wave only got personality in Legends of Tomorrow. In the comics, Heat Wave is just Snart's best buddy. And he, he just does whatever Lenny wants to do. As long as he gets to burn stuff. So basically, he's like those cartoon villains, like the, uh, like, like those ones in, um, yeah. Like, so, um, like, which way to go, George? Which way to yeah, go? basically, he's he's like he's like if you've ever watched a Dragon Ball movie, you know, uh, you know the formula of the fact that like the you know in the old Dragon Ball movies they had to fight the the like the fat muscular one, the small one, and the girl. <laughs> Uh, Heat Wave yeah. was always the, the like the muscle. That th yeah, that that's him. Which but, like I'm upset that they took a Flash villain because like if we were if we're gonna like spin this off into a whole ass universe, which I hope is the case, now the Rogues are gonna be missing a key member. So that sucks. Who knows? But, um, but yeah, um. Also, the Task Force X, having all of them have a connection to Superman? Yeah, that feels weird to me because that's not, at that, at that point, it's not Task Force X, it's the Superman Revenge Squad. And yes, that is a real thing. It exists. Look it up. Uh, it's, yeah. it's not a creative name because apparently Superman villains are not that creative. But Which, at the very least, you could have at least just said Task Force S. Yeah. Like, I don't I don't understand like why why you would do this. Like Task Force X and Checkmate. Also, Checkmate shouldn't be a Superman bad guy. Like, Checkmate is a you're you're doing Justice League things for just Superman, which doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to, all this stuff is supposed to be broader strokes, Justice League stuff. You don't need to bring this in right now. 
Like, once you build up the universe and establish a Justice League, that's when you bring in Amanda Waller. That's when you bring in the Suicide Squad, because then you can have Captain Boomerang. You can have fucking Deadshot. You can have... Wow, I'm just realizing now that the, the Suicide Squad has mostly Batman villains on it. Because I was about to name more of them, and I was like, yeah, though these are mostly Batman villains. Um, speaking of Batman villains, uh, I don't like what they did with Slade. Deathstroke sucks. Um, I think, what I think with Slade is, I don't like the super, uh, the Kryptonian tech aspect of him, but I feel like what they might be doing with Slade is the same thing that you were saying with Lex where they're building him over time. See, but here's the thing, right? Slade isn't supposed to be young. Slade, how they should have done him, right? He should have been a colleague of Sam and Amanda Waller who got experimented yeah. on because he... The thing that Slade is most known for is being the worst dad in the DC Universe. Mm -hmm. And you can't do that if he's, like, 20-something. Well, we don't know his age. How long for did, sure. How young was he in, like, Teen Titans? Uh, well, Teen Titans, they never actually oh. show his face. So... Yeah. But he didn't... And, uh, they had... There. I mean, they had Ron Perlman. They had Ron Perlman. So he, yeah. had, so he had a very mature voice anyways. Uh, we do, we do know canonically that in that Teen Titans that, uh... His son Grant was killed in a mission by the team, which is why he takes the contract, just like in the com just just like in the comics. It's why he has the hate boner and especially mm -hmm. goes after uh, Dick Grayson because uh, he blames him. Also, I believe Jericho was hinted at. Uh, Jericho was actually shown. Um, oh, Jericho was actually shown in O Three Titans. Uh, he has the powers and everything with the horn and all that. Yep. Okay. Um, but yeah, I don't like it. Uh, Slade should never be Slade should never be young. Um, I agree with you. He's always a, a grizzled veteran. That's how his character works. It's what makes his character uh, work. That experience is what makes him. Yeah, that character was less. Slade and more uh what was his name? Raiden? Oh respawn? No, from uh Metal Gear. Oh yeah, Raiden. Yeah. He was definitely Raiden. Um like I was talking with Cap about this and I totally agree. I would have accepted this death stroke if this death stroke was Grant Wilson. Be oh, yeah. Because, you know, there was a pe like Grant was killed by the Titans impersonating Deathstroke. Wait a minute. Hmm. I just had a thought. What? They only call him Wilson. Oh, shit! Mm. That's fair. That's fair. But, so if anybody's maybe. watching, then you better, you should probably keep this in mind. Yep. But, there's also another thing, folks. Another thing, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. Let's not forget. One of his eyes got shocked out of his skull. Yeah, he is missing yeah. the eye. It, yeah, it's, yeah. it's Slade. Oh, well. That, Most likely, but there is, it was, there is like a 15% chance. There, oh. there was, there was, but. Honestly, though, I don't, no. I, didn't, I didn't even see him get shocked like that. It just like happened so fast. I didn't. Yeah, notice. I forgot. I honestly forgot he lost an eye. Well, yeah. um, it was in his very last season, and Livewire did it just to fuck with him. Yeah, yeah I know. Yep. Like there was no reason for her to do that. Yep. And it's kind of like the whole cat thing, and it with Sam with uh Samuel Jackson losing. Yep. It yeah, it feels very it feels very lame. Which is again another reason why I don't like this death stroke. He feels very incompetent. Yeah. And which he feels like he's but, just like an attack dog that doesn't 
do anything. Like he doesn't think. Yeah, which is which does a disservice to Deathstroke's character because Deathstroke is one of the most Machiavellian, fucking petty asshole villains in the DC universe. Like, and from what I've seen, he's relatively intelligent too, right? He's super intelligent. Oh yeah. I mean, he had that whole long con plan of planting his underage girlfriend in the Titans to, uh, like, destroy the team from the inside. Mm -hmm. And then he purposely broke his underage girlfriend's heart so that she could uh, she could collapse the cave they were in so that uh, he could both uh, kill her and the Titans because he wanted to go back to his uh, ex-wife. Oh yeah, that that dude. It's like the serum. It's kind of like with Captain America that people forget that the serum also increased his brain. Mm -hmm. Yep. So it, Slade's brain has been increased. Yep. It's it, it's I and this this Deathstroke just seems so dumb. Like I I I had hope when he was fighting alongside Sam. But then when Waller became boss and he just stood behind her, it's like, oh, you're just a lapdog for who's ever in charge. Which is fine. Him being a lapdog is fine, but I don't like that he's a lapdog to authority. Slade follows mm -hmm. the money. If you pay him enough, he will work for you. Mm -hmm. Like shit. Dick Grayson paid him enough money to where he, uh, he trained... Uh, Nightwing. So, you know, he can be mm -hmm. bought, which is fine. That's part of his character. But they never actually show that, which is dumb. No. Yeah, it is. Um, Like, at first, when I saw him, mm -hmm. his character was so generic that at first I thought, is that Floyd? But then I saw him using the swords and the the orange helmet, and they called him Wilson. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. I, I wouldn't have known he was Slade until they called him Wilson if I didn't always watch with the subtitles on. Uh, which uh, me and Tony alluded to in the Screen Time episode. That, uh, you know, you guys should watch it with the subtitles on. Because, uh, you know, when he speaks, they say Will, uh, the... You know how they have like character's name and then the dialogue it says mm -hmm. Wilson there. Definitely, so yeah. Mhm. Mm Which uh speaking of um just real quick we don't have to go into detail cuz I know you probably want to do it later. Yeah. But uh for the dude at the end, do they say it? No. They don't say it. But they say but you know he he says the line that pretty much gives away that it's him. Okay. Because I've had people online questioning. No, because uh, uh, in the subtitles, he's he uh, he's labeled as Nemesis Omega. Okay. But, but anyway, back mm -hmm. back to Slade. Yeah, or Slade. So yeah, the other Slade villain, Slade. the other vi other villains are fine. I I like the other villains. Uh, those three in particular were just ones I really didn't like. Um, I will say there is one villain thing that kind of irked me. Okay. I liked the group, but I wish they had a different name. This version of Intergang? Yeah. Uh, I didn't like that either because, uh, Intergang... I, look, you don't have to be one-to-one, -one, but, like, why call yourselves Intergang if you're not doing what Intergang does? I mean... Which they kind of do. They still traffic alien weapons and tech. But like, where's your like mafia hierarchy? Where's where's Bruno? Dude. Mm -hmm. Dude, they don't traffic alien tech. They happened upon it. Yeah. And I... their only motive was petty crime. Yeah, which is fucking dumb. Like which... th I feel like that would have been okay if they were more like their comic counterparts and had a different name, but to call them 
inter gang. You're three people. You're not a gang. I'm saying, you're you're basically the Beagle Boys from Ducktales. <laughs> yep. <laughs> which, which, uh, by the way, just just real quick side note, they're not big enough characters to uh, dedicate a whole thing to. But I did like what they did with the with the news boys. Oh, That's oh, the comic version. Yeah, yeah, the News Kid Legion. Uh, I, I, yeah, yeah, they're awesome. Flip is Flip is a fantastic character. I thought she was gonna be annoying, yeah. but she turned out to be fucking clutch. And apparently, somehow, single-handedly or with her friends, managed to carry giant, like buff Superman back to her clubhouse. Look, she's a resourceful kid. I'm sure she found a way. She treated Superman better than Lois. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, seriously. Ah, uh, Lois, do better. Sweetie, come on. Next season, please, grow up. Ah, uh, we love but, you. Yeah, we on, believe in you. Different. Come yeah, on, do it. Villain, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, I, I feel like ne- now's, now's the time we can... Uh, just kind of switch to talking about Clark. Well, what about the the two? Oh yeah, yeah. Two big... Oh yeah, oh yeah. Duh, duh. So let's talk. Let's talk about. Let's talk about Sam and the Wall. Um, I like this take on oh, Sam. <clears throat> These uh, weren't who I was talking about, but I do like Sam. Mm-hmm. I do as well because yep. um, as much he's still a as he's like that trope the loving general father that that can't really speak his mind to his daughter because mm-hmm. he's always waiting for the next threat yep he's really involved yeah. in his work and he he legitimately actually cares about people so mm-hmm. where, no and, like he, and he's he's actually a good guy right uh the thing i hate about comic book for po- comic book general lane is that he's just thunderbolt ross but in the dc universe mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And less unhinged and mentally unstable, um, but like this Sam, he has a reason to fear aliens. He's not just xenophobic because America. Um, yeah, and I will say a big moment that helped do that for me was like when he witnessed Clark crying. Yeah, and he realized yeah. that oh, this is a kid. This is he's innocent. A young man, yeah, and he he legitimately stood up to Waller. Yeah, you that, you, ende- that endears you. Like, yeah, infinitely. exactly. You have mm-hmm. to have balls of fucking nth metal to stand up to the wall. Balls to the wall. I mean, look, I wouldn't be surprised if that happened. Um. Which, by the way, shout out, Mandy. shout out to this show for keeping Fat Waller. Yeah. Well, she's the way that they did it is she's fat, but she also looks like she can kick your ass. She's yeah, she she's Wilson Fisk fat. Yeah, she's Wilson Fisk fat. But I still, but still, I appreciate that they kept Fat Waller. And I appreciate yeah. they kept on making her the freaking worst person in the human. The oh yeah, the human she's world. supposed to oh, be. Yeah. She's supposed to be the absolute worst person in existence to the point where, like, there's a whole there's a whole story arc in the Suicide Squad where uh, they have to um, basically. Uh, she sends the Suicide Squad to hell in order to uh, steal a get out of hell free card because Amanda knows because Amanda is terminal and has cancer and she knows that the second she dies she's going straight to the deepest part pits of hell so yeah like yeah and also at one point goes beyond the uh, explosive callers and I believe we've mentioned this before on cast maybe not but to the fact where uh, Task Force Z, where 90% of the team are undead and only alive because she says so. Yep. What the fuck? 
Yep. Waller Waller is so uh, fucked up. Yeah, uh she just to truncate it, uh she creates a team led by Jason Todd where they they're all zombies that were created by the uh Laz- by the Lazarus pit. Yep, Lazarus and resin. She she keep mm-hmm. Yeah, she keeps giving them the serum that will keep them steady being alive. And if she doesn't and they don't do what she says, they just decompose mm-hmm. and die. Yep. Again. And this includes people like Bane. Yep. Which, uh, man, like, Waller, I, I appreciate that this Waller is spot on. She She's the worst, but she's completely unapologetic because Waller always believes she's right. Mm-hmm. She even allowed the, mm-hmm. the villains to escape just so that she could take Lane's job. Yep. Yep. She was willing to kill people and her own people. Oh yeah. Yep. That. She's willing cause, because cause Amanda Waller is the type of person that the job she's like she's like if Batman was like if Batman worked for the government. Because like very much like Batman, Amanda Waller is like I will do whatever it takes as long as the mission is complete. However, where she differs from Batman is Batman has a line. Batman will not kill people, endanger innocence, or, like, you know, maim any of his villains if he can help it. Like, yep. like Meanwhile, Waller, Waller, line, what line? And she takes... The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few to the nth degree. And most of the time, the many isn't even the many. It's it's the needs of the Walder. Mm-hmm. True. Um, but yeah, so she's fantastic. And I cannot wait to see her as a main antagonist. Even though, like I said, I feel like she doesn't... She shouldn't be a Superman antagonist. She should be a Justice League antagonist. And it also feels weird because... In every iteration of like the comics with uh like with Waller, Superman is the one hero that Amanda Waller trusts because she knows that Superman will always do good. Yeah, that is weird. The like the also, w- like the one that she treats like this all the time is Batman. Yep. Yeah. Also, can we point out um how uh, there is a hero who is coming to live action technically for the first time and uh, in the movie and has a connection to Checkmark in Checkmate in the comics. Oh yeah, wait. Mr. Terrific. Yeah, Mr. Terrific. Uh be- because he infiltrated Checkmate, you know, ba- back in the day. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the reason why I said technically it's because he was an arrow, but it was his brother. Yep. Oh man. I I, I really I really like it. Um I re- I really like this interpretation of Waller. Um and I and I like Sam. Uh I wanna know how his wife died, because clearly the death like his uh, like his like mm-hmm. his wife's death has to do with his like fear and paranoia of aliens. Um I do appreciate also, the, that the wife dies in this universe and isn't just a piece of shit. Oh yeah. Uh because every also, everywhere else uh for those of you guys who don't know um or or even haven't seen uh Superman and Lois, uh in most iterations uh Mama Lane is a piece of shit and just abandons her children. And mm-hmm. and leaves Sam to take care of them by himself. Yep. Which is why but Sam it, is so overprotective. Yeah. But in this one, I do have to admit, though, that they've already confirmed that whatever happens to her happens after Zero Day. Mm-hmm. So that's interesting. Yep. Okay, so... And I gotta say that it still kind of works, like, even with Amanda Waller there, like, it still kind of works that she would 
to distrust Superman and what she experienced with him. Oh yeah, yeah. Because what what yeah, this version works because of uh, you know the fact that she experienced zero day. But it, it, it just it's weird overall because usually Superman's the one hero that Amanda Waller trusts. Yeah, because Superman usually does yeah. work for the government yeah. most of the time. Yeah, right? yeah, and uh, like that's the thing, right? Uh, like Waller trusts Superman because Superman has worked with the president. <laughs> like, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, when uh, Lex was president, she was Superman hated it, but he respected him. Yep, and. Guess who was his vice? Uh, Mm -hmm. Man, that was a time. Mm -hmm. That was a time. Although, at least Black Lightning was Secretary of Education. So that was cool. That was good. Yeah. Also, my two cents on Mixtaplik. I liked him. Oh, yeah. Uh, I feel like it was kind of like the... I like the design, Mm -hmm. but it also felt kind of weird considering most of the time he's... His whole thing is that he's like the same in every universe right yeah i i also don't like that well i mean it's not confirmed that it's not magic but they they really imply that he's some kind of like alien god. chaos god yeah, yeah and it's usually just uh he he's just a person from the fifth dimension right yeah yeah he's a fifth dimensional imp who is a big fan of superman and this time he's just like uh and he does uh, he kind of has like a playful. He does have a playful attitude. Yeah, but and, he and he's never right. he's never a criminal. It's weird that they actually make him a criminal. He just likes to troll Superman. That's his whole thing. Yeah, also, it's really weird that they make him go like Super Saiyan when he puts on. Yeah, like, puts the hat on. Yeah, and then when you take it off, he's like super weak. Because yeah, that, yeah. Um, how how you're supposed to defeat Mister Mixel Spitalik is the you have to make him say his name backwards. And not only that, yeah. but if, if he's if he's supposed to be like the same way in every single universe, mm-hmm. then that's the only way to defeat him. And his hat has nothing. To do. Yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, like I I still what? hold that. Rest in peace, Gilbert Godfrey. That is the best interpretation of Mister Mixelpidelic oh. we've we've gotten. I agree. Yeah, but also I will admit that this is not the worst, Mister Mixelpidelic. Yeah, Supergirl because, has the uh, worst. Yeah. Yep. Because uh, for those that don't know, they made him just an uber simp for Supergirl. Yep. It was weird. Well, point, I'm also willing to believe that he changed, he could somehow change his powers to that to give everyone a fair chance again. Yeah. I don't know. Or, like, like look, my, I, 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 I think he just did it to cause drama because it would be more interesting. Mm-hmm. But that's, that's just my personal head canon. Yeah, exactly. Because I, I do love that angle where he trolls Lois with the whole uh, File X thing. And he's just yeah. like, I could tell you what this is and solve all your problems and, you know, not make you a paranoid mess. But I enjoy watching you make terrible decisions. So can... his personality is mm-hmm. on point, too. So... Oh, yeah. 100%. Oh, yeah. Um, But, yeah. But so also, uh, do you want to mention the two kind of villains who are definitely going to be villains in season two? Uh, which one are you referring to? Uh, Brainiac and... Uh... Oh, Brainiac and Zod? Yeah, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's why I wanted to talk about Clark first, because it was going to talk... I was going to talk about like Krypton and oh, that that whole my bad. that whole backstory and it was going to lead into that. Um my bad. Well, we can Which talk about we Clark. We can still anyway. do. Yeah, yeah. So, so let's talk about Clark. Um I really like this angle for Clark. Um Oh yeah. I I really I appreciate like that him not knowing his past is such a big thing and uh cuz like mm-hmm. in a lot of Superman media um, which you know we talked about previously. They they always make uh, like the position of Jor El very clear, and they like never make Superman grapple with the idea of Krypton being a place full of bad people, because he already knows yeah. that like the only bad faction are Zod and his extremist. Um, but with yeah. this, they, and, they play with that ambiguity a lot, and I like it. Yeah, 
And in this version, uh, he doesn't just magically know Kryptonian or or his dad just doesn't magically know English. Now, to be fair, to to be fair to all those other versions of Superman, uh, the reason he knows Kryptonian in uh, Estes and in, um, you know, every other like Superman thing is because in his baby pod, they basically give him lessons in Kryptonian. So to, to store subconsciously so that when the crystal activates, it reawakens those memories and he can speak Kryptonian. It's comic logic, but it's logic. I get that, but I'm saying that I like this unique twist. That that oh yeah, yeah, happen. yeah, yeah. Where he can't, where he can't understand Kryptonese. Yeah, I think that's really cool, and that that language barrier being a big thing, and like him thinking Jor-El is this evil dude, and I the the tr I love the tragedy of it because Jor-El is begging and mm -hmm. pleading and just like, no, you don't understand, and like I. That that final moment where he gets to recreate uh, his last moments with his son, and the one time Clark is able to understand him, he hears the he hears Kalel live, and that's just that was perfect. Uh, yeah, and uh, very powerful moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and makes it even more tragic though, because when you see the flashback at the beginning, mm -hmm. Clark thinks. That he took it him away from his mother. Mm -hmm. At one point. Yep. And I, I, but, I am curious to see what uh what version of Kryptonian society that we get. Um, is it the whole uh, Kryptonians are a bunch of sexless science monks who uh like pr produce their babies in test tubes, and Cal is oh, the yeah. and Cal is the first actual natural birth on Kryptonian uh, on Kryptonian soil in centuries which is why they wanted Damn. to send him off um makes me really think about uh Krypton mm -hmm. and how that was gone too soon yep cuz they were were they they weren't really super explicit right on what happened yeah uh i mean now that we saw Brainiac we know for sure that Krypton was destroyed by a combination of Brainiac and Zod. Because we know that the, like, the, that invasion portal from Zero Day was Brainiac technology. And so, yeah. it, it's heavily implied that they're kind of, and we already see that this series has a lot of reference for Estas, and in Estas, uh, Brainiac was a was a rogue AI program that did cause the destruction of Krypton by purposely overloading the planet's core and blowing it the mm -hmm. fuck up. And it did it by secret, so maybe if they want to uh, homage Estas, what if Brainiac did it without Zod knowing? Or he did he did it with Zod knowing, and Zod was cool with it because, like you know, everybody else on it was uh, you know a nerd who wouldn't let him conquer and rule the galaxy like he wanted. True, true. So I'm very interested. Uh, I get why they don't reveal Zod's face and they put him in the armor and they like you know have the filter on, but. You know, all you have to do is say Neil, and you know it's Neil mm -hmm. before Zod. But we were talking about Clark. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so Clark, Clark was really good. Yeah, this is the this is the best uh, this is the best version of Clark we've seen in a while, for sure. He's yeah. Just so um, and he's so he's just mm -hmm. like he's like a freaking gumdrop yeah he's such like, a you want to see him succeed he's such a goober yeah. and you yeah. and you want you want the best for him and in yeah. and in the very beginning you're like oh man lois is great this is going to be awesome you guys are gonna be so cute 
and then she ruins it and you're just like and now you're just like clark stay away from this stay away from this catastrophe go 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 find lana go back to lana lang go find somebody else with alliterative initials yeah and unlike um unlike voldemort yep. this actually does a good job at like introducing the new powers yeah, I agree. Oh, yes. Yeah. He doesn't just get them right away. Mm -hmm. He actually has to learn. Yeah, he has to learn each one. It, it, it reminds me a lot of Smallville in, like, the best way. And also, they're making Electric Blue cool. I mm -hmm. love it. And I love the fact mm -hmm. that he has a Magical Girl transformation. Yeah. And, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but, uh, the way that they're doing electric blue is kind of similar to uh, the early days uh, of DBZ when it came to like Super Saiyan. Where yeah. It just it only came out. Yeah. At the most desperate. Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 Moments. Which which is actually how they're doing it for uh, Superman's son currently. Uh, which is awesome. And, uh, and I, I love that take. And it, it's cool that they're using it for this younger version of Clark uh, because it works really well. It's um, also interesting to see that he that they all that he started not as a order, but as an intern. Mm -hmm. Like he actually had to work his way up, which is not cool. To mention, mm -hmm. uh, that he has like a. Um, he actually does get hurt. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. Uh, oh yeah. And I just want to say also, just real quick, that um, this one also he goes into the Daily Planet while he's still like getting his shit together and learning how to be himself, which is, I guess you could say, more of of how he wasn't able to really hide it from. Jimmy and Lois, which he was, he was, he was able bit, to hide it from what they were going. With. He was able to hide it from Lois because Lois is a fucking idiot for some reason. Um, well, actually, she she wasn't an idiot. It's just so much that she actually figured it out. Remember, we were discussing, yeah, yeah, kind of like that, yeah, yeah. The, but the, that just took it the wrong way. Yeah, yeah. I, okay, yeah, that, yeah. That's more of the issue is that she fucking took the lo wrong lesson away from it because. She she discovered it in episode four, which is pretty early on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was very early. Oh, yeah, very early. But uh, I'm glad they didn't beat her on the bush with it. Uh, because it's a, it's a weird thing with modern superhero, like, retellings from, like, Square One. Because the secret identity is a very important trope. And I do feel like it should remain intact. I think super, uh, secret identities are important. But I do agree with the method of the small circle knowing your secret identity so that you can have people cover for you. Uh, and, like, it's a, it's a weird fine line of, like, knowing how long you keep your, your people in the dark because if she was in the dark for too long, Lois would have looked incompetent. But if she figured it out too quickly, she would have felt like a Mary Sue. Yeah, and also trying to decide who's in that small circle. Mm -hmm. And also keeping it a small circle, unlike some people. Barry! Yep. <laughs> yep. Like, th th that's like his opening move to get people to trust him instead of just talking to them as the Flash. It's like, you can trust me. I'm Barry Allen. <laughs> like, you, what if they still end up a Dude. villain, bro? Most of the time, they're still a villain and they know your secret identity, which what? is why which is why you have to keep them in your secret fucking Guantanamo Bay that you have in your basement. Mm-hmm. Each, each, each person that he reveals to it, it's like a third, like join him and trust him and are part of the team. A third turn out to be villains that he has to put in his special prison, and then 
the last third all die are just love interests that just are Dis never seen from again. Yep, they disappear. And then the other camp of the ones that end up finding out his secret identity and then dying before they can reveal it. Oh yeah, that's right. That would take up like half of them. Yep. So but it yeah. reminds me of that one scene in uh I think it was Justice League, right? Where yeah. Lex Luthor is in the body of the Flash. Yeah. Oh that that, like, that is that is the funniest shit ever. Where he, he's deal? like, Well, it's like I'm not in I'm not in the body of Superman. Well, at least I'm in the body of the Flash. He takes off the he takes off the cowl and he's like, I have no idea who this is. Which that it's it's doubly fun that episode is doubly funny because um, you know, it's Lex Luthor in the Flash's body, and at the time, Michael Rosenbaum, who is the voice of the Flash on Justice League, is also currently playing Lex Luthor on Smallville. Yeah. So, oh my god. Oh so, my god. And so it's an bravo to him. Mm -hmm. yep. Now you're good. Go bravo ahead. to him because him in the body. In him in the being the Flash in the body of Lex, badly pretending to be Lex. Yeah, that's su uh, that's that's a high level acting because he for the longest time was the best live action Lex Luthor I've ever seen, and you know he's still up mm -hmm. there because he's great. Just I just went to the bathroom and I didn't wash my hands. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Uh but anyways, back to Clark. Yeah, yeah. Clark yeah, Clark Clark is fantastic. Uh like you really you really want this boy to succeed. And he just mm -hmm. you can tell he wears his heart on a sleeve and boy does he have a big heart. Like just all the little shit. Like in episode one where he's helping that the not like the family that owns the grocery store. Uh it's it's just all those and wholesome the, moments, man. Today's gonna be a normal day. Well, yeah. Damn it. I just the way From he now on, today's gonna be a normal day. Oh yeah. And he doesn't stop to. He doesn't stop helping people. Yeah, yeah. I I lo I love yeah. that when he discovers his super hearing. Like the the fir the first thing he does is just constantly help people to the point where he, like, gets no sleep. Is living off of coffee and, and jimmy coffee has to be and jimmy has to be like bro go to sleep yeah like but he was getting to the point where he was helping people that could have lived without his help like like taking the kids to school yep yep although that's one hell of a story that's 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 a flex you will have for the rest of your life or also when he when he uh keeps when he helps that child remember yeah and he like actually is like super happy yeah that was sweet yeah no that was that was that was wonderful I, I was expecting that to take a villainous turn honestly but it never did yep you were gonna say something Tony oh then you have like when the child returns to uh her parents and then Miss is trying to be a dickhead. Making Clark just slam against the truck. Yep. Trying to get him out of the way. Everyone's looking like, hey, you're going to cause a fucking accident. Like, yep. Bro. Which, to be fair, I can't, I, can't really, I, can't really get, I can't really get mad at the people because Clark did fuck up there. Because he was, yeah, on, he was yeah. on low sleep and wasn't paying attention. Also, I agree with that. Invisible enemy, so the other people didn't see him. Yep. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. But I was like, oh yeah, I was worse than complimenting Miss being a cheeky little bastard. Oh yeah, even though he wasn't too keen on the idea. For sure. Oh yeah, I I, I like that it shows that Miss, uh, like Miss regrets, like regrets doing this shit, um, because he sees how good of a guy Clark is. Again, I really wish that the the siblings were magical. Like I, I don't know, it just it bothers this me. This was the invisible guy, right? Yeah, yeah. No, but remember, he was the one who tricked Clark into doing that all. Yeah, at I the know. end. Yeah. Yeah. The point is, well, my point is that is 
he was a clever bastard in tricking Clark, even though Clark was tired and all that stuff. But he, he felt remorse. Did he? He did. Yeah, he did. Oh, yeah. When when he when he revealed the collar, he had that he had that like sad look on his face, like he had to he put on airs when everybody was all hyped to take down Superman, but I don't think he was really that into it. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, he didn't like actually participate. In the slamming down of Superman. Yep. It was only uh, Banshee, Heatwave, Parasite, and Livewire. Also, and uh, whatchamacallit, the big dude. Oh, yeah. I always forget the his that, I always forget his the name. One that keeps forgetting people's names. I don't remember his name either, to be honest. So, you know. <laughs> we, we forgot. His, it's, it's mutual. We forgot his name. Yep. This, and that's it. That's all I know, man. Yep. He's not he's not a member of their family anyway. He's just he, he's just Kyle's best friend. Yeah. Also, one of one of the other things that I I know I mentioned to Jay mm -hmm. was that some of the things that uh Clark did were a little bit out of character because when it comes to villains, he would immediately try and get the fight out of the city. Yeah, but I chalked that um, up I chalked that up to him being a rookie, you know? Cuz like uh, a lot of a lot of times in early Superman stories, he isn't an experienced hero, so he doesn't know how to assess damages on the fly. Um, so a lot of the times, his his battles had to be in the city, and he would get all this property damage, but then he would fix it. Uh, which I'm glad they address that, and they have him fix things for the yeah. most part. Like you know, he put those cards like in his first save as superman he like puts the cars yeah. back and all that shit he fixes the fire hydrant when he lands on that fire hydrant in the later episode where he's sleep deprived yep mm -hmm. by the way mm -hmm. dude's name is roughhouse roughhouse okay, okay. he's an obscure it. member he was an obscure member in the of inner gang in the comics okay cool okay Cool. Well, I'm probably gonna forget his name. <laughs> yeah, he's he's a pretty forgettable guy. He's just Unga Munga man. So. Mm -hmm. And then also one of the other things that I remember I told you was uh, uh, there was a time where he was fighting Parasite or Doctor Ivo, mm -hmm. and he had the chance to when he got that guy, he had the chance to put him on the ground, but instead he puts him back on top of the building. Yeah. So he could have easily just, uh, it would have been faster if you just dropped him on the ground and it would have been safer too before he went back so that he wouldn't put the guy in danger anymore. Again, I, 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 chalk, I chalk it all up to rookie moves and, you know, not really knowing how to superhero. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, that's something that you could kind of, fit, you can kind of understand though at the beginning, right? Yeah. But. I don't know. I can like I can kind of. I mean, uh, you something that I can't. I mean, you also you also have to keep in mind the timeline. He's only really been Superman for like four months. Yeah. 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 Like when he was when he was chasing Kyle, I was in my mind for a minute there. I was like, why don't you just freeze breath him? Oh right, you don't know that yet. Didn't he, Actually, he? No, he, he no, he, no, he learned it. He learned it. He, yeah, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. He did. He learned heat vision and super hearing. Yeah. Yeah. The only ice came from the ice gun that Air Gang stole. Oh, see, that's where I got the confusion from. The ice gun. I kept thinking that was freeze. Bro okay, never mind. No, he used. To, yeah, he just like burned himself out of that. I retract. I retract my statement. Yeah, I retract also, mine too. Whoever did the voice actor for Clark was really like passionate about it. Too. Yeah, Jack Quaid, Huey from the Boys. Oh yeah. Uh, apparently, from what I heard, I watched a behind the scenes thing, and uh, apparently, uh, Jack Quaid would keep them in the studio longer than even like the director said to, because he's like, "No, I can do that better." Yep. I want to get I want to get the line right. That doesn't sound like Clark. Uh, which is mm -hmm. which? Yeah, he's that's amazing. He cares about the character so much, and you can tell in the performance. 
honestly all the character all the voice actors are pretty good oh yeah all um, all the vo- look we shit on lois for most of this podcast but her performance is fantastic she gives the energy that that kind of character would give yep and as much as i i didn't like lois the, there are some good parts about her like especially in the last few episodes oh yeah yeah that's when she started to somewhat redeem herself. oh yeah yeah like like when she sure. when she uh, like gave that message about like what superman means to the city that's the lowest lane i want to see like so that kind of that kind of like it gives me hope of... yeah it gives me hope that she's oh, gonna yeah. get better but like you said earlier trash i hope that she faces more consequences because she just kind of won in the end yeah because she got clark as a oh, boyfriend yeah. and he loves her dearly which like that, yeah I understand a lot. yeah like he lo- he loves her dearly and like doesn't blame her for anything which you know like that is clark's character i i don't fault him for it because that is what clark would do like clark never like calls lois out on her bullshit because he just thinks lois is perfect um like that's all versions of clark uh, and and uh, which which is why like you know going back to Superman and Lois, it, it uh it's such a big thing when Clark is finally like no Lois you have to go to your treatment you are sick you have cancer I'm putting my foot mm-hmm. down you're going oh yeah mm-hmm. um would. We- so, by the way, speaking of actors, you really couldn't tell because he was in it so little. Mm-hmm. But uh, it, you know that he's going to have a bigger part in season two. Brainiac was actually voiced by Michael Emerson. Oh, cool. Uh, which people might know from Lost or Person of Interest. Uh, most recently, he though, he was in The Dark Knight... Uh, uh, Batman The Dark Knight Returns. Yeah. Animated. Mm-hmm. As the Joker. Yep. Mm. Uh that's a that's a great so. two part adaptation that people should definitely check out. Um uh, which like you know, I, I wanna say like a shout out to other Superman media. An- another uh, incarnate another universe that does the Superman and Lois dynamic really well uh, and shows like Superman as an intern is uh the movie superman man of tomorrow uh that has darren chris voicing superman it's in the same universe as the uh what do you call it uh justice league world war ii movie uh it's fantastic it's the origin for that superman and that does a great version of the parasite and parasite's origin so nice if you're interested in that check that one out it's great. Nice. And also, um, speaking about, uh, we didn't really mention this, and this is about Clark, kind of. Mm-hmm. But uh, I got to ask, because you're more comic-oriented. Mm-hmm. Uh, the pseudo-suit that Clark wears in the first episode, was that an homage to Earth 1? You talking about the hoodie? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I found initially. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's the that, that's that's the Earth, that's the Earth One outfit that you see on the cover of the uh, Earth One Volume One. I have it somewhere. Um, I do it's a good book. Uh, you know, written written by written by JMS J Michael Straczynski, creator of Babylon Five. I have to say it because mm-hmm. he always says it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But yeah, uh, this had a lot of references. In it. Oh yeah, a lot of references, okay. a lot of homages. If you're a Superman fan, it's a, a smorgasbord, and like, oh my god, the uh, the fucking the the treasure room that the Legion of Lois has had. I I oh my god, I rewound that scene several times just so I could count out all the references. I was uh-huh. like, yeah. I was like, oh my god, that's the Eye of Ekron. Oh my god, that's one of the books of magic. Oh, that's Fate's helmet. Oh, that's fucking, that's a Legionnaire flight ring. Wait, that's one of the, fl- that's a flash ring. What the, f- why is a flash thing yeah. in here? 
It's like why are the why did they and, why did Howard the Lois is able to get all this? Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. And uh, the funny thing is, is that it's not all DC. Yep. Like uh, one of the Loises that we see an image of has a fucking Keyblade. Yeah, which we found out wasn't actually a Keyblade. It was just the key to the city, but it really does look like a Keyblade. Yeah. Oh, I think that was that was done on purpose. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Just like um, just like that is so totally not a Buster Sword at the uh the headquarters of the Legion of Lois. Oh yeah, and all, also I I love that uh, Lois Prime is the Lois from the original 1930s cartoon. Yeah. Which, by the way, they are available on HBO Max to watch, uh, fully remastered and recolored. They're beautiful. Uh, check them nice. out. Uh, sure, it's very dated, and uh, there's a lot of stuff said there that would not fly today. And uh, a lot of stereotypes, but get past that and it's it's really good um so yeah like i i loved i loved all the care and the attention to detail that this series had it's it's great um, yeah also, uh, and the overall mixy. oh yeah for sure when he just like transforms them into the different super Mm-hmm. Oh man, when, oh, we, yeah. when we got to, when we got to see uh, S as Superman for that brief second, I was like, "Oh shit, yay!" Yeah, yeah, for true. This whole thing, it felt like as a whole that it was like a modern day reinterpretation of Silver Age. I'm telling you, it feels very like I, there's a reason I brought up. Silver Age Superman all throughout this episode of the podcast. It feels very Silver Age, except not because Superman's not a total asshole. Yeah. Like, still... They got the vibe, but not... They got the vibe of the zaniness of the Silver Age, but they didn't get Superman of the Silver Age, who is a monster. Like, he... He NTRs Mr. Miracle and doesn't apologize for it. Yeah, that that shit was buck wild. Like, all because I didn't realize. I didn't realize that the, uh, this is how Silver Age is like when he started, right? No, Silver Age is nineteen fifties to the late uh, to the early seventies. Mm-hmm. Dang, he was a dirtbag for that long. Yes, he start. Yeah, he did some wild and shit. So, uh, so, uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do another zany Silver Age side tangent uh comic fans know this one because it's infamous but Mm -hmm. um so mr mixus piddlick in one of his efforts to troll superman um mind controlled him and big barda and convinced uh the two of them to uh make a sex tape Uh, it wasn't it wasn't mitzi it was another like creepy alien. Oh yeah, it was another creepy alien villain. Some random creepy alien mind controlled Superman and Big Barda, convinced them to make a sex tape, and and then yeah. and then you know Scott was like, okay, we need to destroy this. Like I'm not letting you. And like you know he was waiting for Clark to be like, I'm sorry I fucked your wife, but he never said I'm sorry I fucked your wife. Nope. Who's writing these? Uh, a lot of them are Auto Bender. Auto Be- Auto Bender is really good at writing asshole Superman. No, Auto Bender's the artist. I don't know who the writer was. Uh, but like, it's 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 the square jaw Superman era. If you ever see Superman with a square jaw, like chances are he's a total dick. Yeah, I believe Superman came out in the. Latter half of the golden age. Yep, uh, 1933 yeah. to be exact. Or no, no, 1939. 1939. 1939. It was 30. Yeah, it was 30. It was 38. Oh yeah, right. Right, right. It was like all. It was like all. It was like August or July of 1938. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so he came out towards the uh, 
towards the very beginning of the golden age before the war um and then you know he lasted all throughout the silver age it was the silver age where he just became a massive dick and then once crisis happened and they rebooted him into modern superman he became the superman we all know and love i'm surprised he survived that long kind of i mean you know uh, he he was a dick, but he was a sign of the times. Yeah, it was a sign of the times, and also you know he fought the Russians. As long as you fight the Russians, you can be as big a dick as you want to America. <laughs> mm-hmm. He beat up the Russians and the Chinese. That's all the readers cared about back then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, um, Interesting. Uh, yeah, you know that's that's comics, man. But, uh... They're a wonderful medium. Back to my adventures. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because <laughs> this has been going on for very long, this podcast. Yep, yep, yep. So... Now we are getting into EFAP territory. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. But, but um... I mean, they have some good sometimes. Like, well, quite a bit, honestly. Yeah. Still. So, anyways... Um, let's go ahead and uh, give our final thoughts and ratings uh, to close up. Uh, as well as a little bit of speculation. Um, so we'll start off with Trash, since you are our guest. We'll let you go first. So overall, I'd have to thank you for, uh, thank you again for the letting me in and of course. letting me join you guys. And uh, overall, it was really good. Um, I, I enjoyed it as much. As I liked most of the characters. Lois, I still, even though she's a complete dirtbag, in in like the middle, mm-hmm. the beginning and then the end kind of help her at least stay like yeah. someone I want to yeah. actually see. I, I want I, I, you root for her to do better. Like she's yeah. not a t- she's not a total mm-hmm. lost cause. Yeah, she's not, and also because Clark and Superman actually like her, and she she legitimately cares about him after like, at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, even to the point of. I mean, obviously crying because she's he's going to kill him. He's going to die yep. because he destroys the sh- Kryptonian ship, which we didn't talk about, I don't think. We talked about it a little bit, like the the, yeah. tra- the tragedy of like Jor-El not being able to speak to his son and like him not him never really knowing the truth um, well, about least, that. Yeah, so. anyways, yeah. Mm-hmm. I have, I'd say it was like uh, 7, 7.5 around there. Okay. Um, only because... Uh, some of those issues I had, some a lot of the Kryptonian tech, and then also the other stuff. But what really kept, but I'd still say that's it's a pretty solid series so far. Okay. As for as for speculation, I mean, obviously it's gonna be with Zod and Yak. Mm-hmm. I feel like if when they do bring them back, it might be at the end of the next series, the next season. Um, but at first it's gonna be more uh Clark utilizing his powers and making. Or, uh, um, this, this trying to trying to show him as like with Lois. Yeah, and 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 and, 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 and like rebuilding his reputation. Mm-hmm. I see. Rebuilding his reputation, and then hopefully having her see she has to apologize, or she has to like. Or something. She really or has she to might, apologize. She might lose him again. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think at this point she realizes. That even though he may seem like uh, visible, she could still lose him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that's pretty much my thoughts. Okay. Uh, Tony, final thoughts yeah. and ratings. Yeah. I really enjoy this show, like I said, and I agree with what everyone here has been saying. And... Not to talk things even further that's already been discussed. 7.5 would be my rating. Okay. So I think just the 30% that irked me really bumped it down half points. I get it. It would have been initially, but I... Yeah, all, all, all all those small gripes added up. No, I, yeah. I understand. Also, Parasite being a kaiju, cool in theory, but terrible in execution. Yeah, 
He's just an Ava. He was just an Ava. Holy shit. You're right. He looked like an Ava. Yeah. Uh, getting the robot, Ivo. If only he turned yeah. into orange juice. Right. Anyways. Hey, at least at least at least he didn't jerk off over somebody's body. Not mm -hmm. yet. Not yet. True. Oh no. Orange Fanta, yeah. Yep. But anyways. Uh. But point being. Still 7.5. I feel you. All right. Also, Brainiac uh -huh. with his ring head. That's hilarious. I think so too. I thought that I thought that was dope. Nice change. Um. Mm -hmm. All right. So now now we move and now we move on to Brian, and then I'll I'll be the one to close us off with my final thoughts, ratings, and speculation. Um. I really liked it. Like you said, though, there were small things that just added up. Like, one that we really didn't discuss was we we briefly mentioned about, like, Clark and Lois' relationship, but, like, not just the speed that it went, but the fact that by the finale, they were already dropping the L-bomb. That, yeah. yeah, that surprised the fuck out of me. The 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 L word yeah. like that was that was crazy. I, I would have felt better if they just like kissed and got together. Yeah, like if she said if she officially started calling herself Superman's girlfriend, Lois Lane, totally like that that would have been worth it. But yeah. like, love you seems a little much because y'all y'all just started dating, really. Yeah. And little stuff like that and the whole mess with the DC mythos together with the Ivo shit and the Amaze core. Because now, even if Amazo does get introduced, he'll be a Superman villain when he's supposed to be... Just asleep. Because that's his whole point, is that he's got their combined powers. Mm -hmm. Also, Also, the fact that... Uh, there needs to be more magic and more definite of magic because we do know that magic exists in this world because one of the artifacts in the yeah doctor the, yeah uh, doctor Fa yeah is doctor Fate's helmet and you see one of the books of magic in that display case so like yeah so we know that magic exists but like they never go into it and also I would like to see them do. Like villains that have no association with Kryptonian tech, like uh, one that I would like to see and have no connection to Waller, even though it's ironic because he was in the latest Suicide Squad movie, is maybe them bringing a version of Bloodsport. Bloodsport would be dope. I love Bloodsport. Yeah. Um, yeah, and just a couple other villains like that yep. that have nothing to do with Kryptonian tech at all mm -hmm. that would be nice to see and like you said before more supporting people like like lana lucy yep stuff yeah. like that that would be cool to see but this is just speculation and negatives at the same time apparently okay um, that's fine but uh but yeah and maybe maybe have like, not them be full-on, like, full members of the show, but maybe have guest stars from other heroes. Because we, even with Vicky, got hints that the Queen family exists. Yeah, and we, we know that Oliver is back because they talked about the inheritance scandal. Because, like, mm -hmm. the, the thing about Oliver when he first comes back is that, like, uh, Merlin tries to claim his inheritance because the statute of limitations kind of thing. My only request is uh, please don't bring back Mr. Scab. Yeah. Amel. Yep. Because he had his run on Green Arrow. It's time for somebody else to uh, yep. take up the mantle. I feel but you. Anyways. 
I've said the negatives, which is why it bounces back for me, and this might surprise you, Jay, but I gotta agree with the boys. Uh, so far, I'm gonna give it a full on uh, 7.5. Huh. Huh. This is interesting. Uh, history ha- Did this ha- Wait. Ha was that episode recorded? Because uh, I don't know if this is the first time this is happening, because technically it's not. Uh, but, yeah, the, the panel is all in unison uh, in terms of score. You know, I'm, I'm not going to beat around the bush, because I, ba I would basically be repeating, uh, like, all of what everybody else said. Um, I will say, though, I really don't like Lois, and Lois is usually one of my favorite characters as someone who is a writer and, you know really enjoys journalism lois is one of my favorite characters of all time and this lois sucks this this yeah. lois really is the worst lois in the multiverse yeah yeah which is weird because we probably have the the second best currently on tv too yep uh believe the actress's name is bitsy Yep, uh, yeah, the Lois from Superman Lois, she's she's the second best yeah. Lois. The best Lois, of course, being uh, Estas Lois. Which, yes. And which, yes. which, by the way, I, I just want to comment, like, you know, Bruce wanted to bang Estas Lois. Bruce Wayne would not want to bang this Lois. Not whatsoever. Like, he would probably be annoyed and sick of her shit. Um... Which, by the way, in terms of speculation, uh, I would like to see Batman. That's just me being a Bat Boy, but I, I would like to see Batman. Um, I also would like to see Martian Manhunter. I feel like that's a, it's a, it's a, it's a good uh, he would be a good character to introduce because it shows oh. Clark that he's not alone and there are other aliens out there. Mm -hmm. Um, sorry, just I meant to mention this in speculation. You reminded me. I would like to see one other character, because uh, I think, similar to what Tony said about, like, introducing uh, Brainiac and Zod later on, I think it would be cool if they did something similar in the vein of, uh, of Krypton, and they brought in Adam Strange, who warned Clark about them coming. Oh, yeah, that would be cool. Um, so, uh, I think... Zod and Brainiac will show up at the midpoint of next season. That's my guess. And then the second half will be dealing with them. Uh, I would like them, like Brian said, to introduce more magic. And I don't know, like, maybe because I love you guys as character designers, but please give me a sexy young stage magician who, you know, does a lot of backwards talking, you know? I, I, I'd, I'd like to see it, you know, fi fishnets, short little stage coat, and the, the, you know, little hat. Come on, please, please. I, I want, I want to see it happen. Not just because I want to see the lewds that are posted on the internet, but I also want to see the lewds that are posted on the internet. Um, maybe, maybe she could help when Nixie returns, and not the Legion of Loises. Yep. I still blank on their name. Yep. Uh, like I said, I would also like to see Batman. I would I would like to at least just hear about like hear about news of other heroes like Batman, the Flash, heroes that you know are probably also in their first year right now. Um so I think that I think that would be really dope. Um hell. Just throw in obscure characters like my favorite DC superhero, Animal Man. Mm -hmm. I would all. I would also really like if uh, this Batman. I think it'd be cool actually if Batman is more experienced, like if Batman's the most experienced, and like he actually has Dick Grayson by this time, because we already like you know Jimmy goes by Flamebird. So it'd be it'd be nice if we get the uh, planting of the seed of Nightwing when eventually Clark does learn more about his past and he, you know, f finds out about Kryptonian history and mythology. So 
that would be cool um i also in terms of speculation believe that clark will recover a backup crystal of jor-el um and he'll be able to actually talk to him and stuff um i don't think that that's the last we've seen of uh computer dad well i mean especially because of like we said the ice machine yep so i i, I think i think that's gonna happen um i i really want to see um also season two bring crypto the super dog just saying you you, you mentioned comet the super horse before we even get hide nor hair of crypto the super dog i mean come on man crypto the super dog crypto rough rough and away god who who doesn't remember that show that show was amazing that show was fun. Yep. And he doesn't even have to talk. He can just... Yeah, he, he can just he can just bork at people. He can just super bork at people. Uh, honestly, the crypto that was in Young Justice was underused, but so awesome. Yeah. No, Crypto, crypto is the best. He's a good boy. Um, I would like to see Crypto. Um, also... I have a feeling that when Zod is introduced and we get more Kryptonians, that this will be how this version introduces uh, Car uh, Kara Zor-El. Like, I think uh, in an homage to how uh, Kara came in post-crisis with the fact that she got brainwashed by Granny Goodness and uh, became one of the one of the Furies, I think she'll have because she's so young and, and uh you know impressionable i think she'll have drank the kool-aid with zod and um you know then she realizes earth is a really nice place and then decides to rebel and she becomes supergirl i think that would be awesome mm -hmm. uh another I mean, uh-huh go ahead i was just gonna say that could be kind of like cathartic especially after the fact that we didn't get to see brainwashed supergirl in young justice and we probably will never get to see it um but the other thing that i want to talk about that this is speculation for like way later down the line so we know that mala and brain run cadmus right and cadmus is the organization responsible for one particular project. Project K2. Which is, for those of you guys who don't remember, it is the Cadmus cloning project that created one Connor Kent, Superboy. And we know that this version of Brain and Mala who run Cadmus are now friends with Clark. And Brain specifically says, until we meet again, Clark Kent. And I don't doubt that Brain or Mala yoinked a piece of Clark's hair before they left. So I totally think somewhere way down the line, we might get to see Connor Kent. Mm-hmm. I can agree to that. And I think that would be awesome. Mm -hmm. Also, something interesting as well, that this isn't all just me speculating, um, because we see how Kryptonite affects Clark in this universe and most likely affects Kryptonians in this universe, and we saw that like they grow crystals on their body, I think uh, what's going to happen in this universe is that Zod is going to get overexposed to kryptonite, grow all those spiky crystals, and transform from Zod into Doomsday. Yeah, I think that huh. might look like it might look like happening. I, yeah, I could agree with you on that. I, mm -hmm. Don't want to spoil it. Very, very contentious. Yeah. And I don't want to spoil things for the other superman show but that would be a weird trend continuing yeah but i definitely see it happening because like 
there has to be a they showed those spikes those kryptonite spike crystals growing out of clark when like even just that little bit of kryptonite was introduced so and you know superman only has one spiky villain and so i think you know creating good old doomsday by using zod would actually be a more logical way in this universe to do it than they did it with fucking zack snyder and bvs where they used his corpse and they mutated his corpse and turned him into doomsday mm -hmm. so i think that's gonna happen like my that's my personal theory and speculation but yeah also 7.5 um, solid show. Really enjoyed it. I cannot wait for season two. It's already been confirmed for a season two. So that speculation isn't yeah. just a uh, waiting for it. Um, and you know, hoping that it'll happen. Uh, but yeah, it was great. Yeah. Uh, once again, thank you trash for coming on. Uh, we will leave, uh, I will leave links to trash's, uh, trash's channel in the description once that channel is made and stuff. So go check trash out. Uh, he makes awesome content uh he you know streams occasionally on tuesdays um on his channel uh as his uh vtuber self uh elish trash for skinko um he is hopefully be doing more regular uh, streams re uh later. just uh it's mostly because of just con like Conven yeah convention seasons work and life stuff i understand but yeah definitely go check trash out and uh yeah so let's talk about next week next week folks it is time it is Make your straw hats it is time and matter of fact hold on one second i will find i'll get i'll get to reveal something folks i shall return all right there we go there we go <laughs> hell yeah so yeah, next week we will be sailing the high seas in search of adventure, wealth, fame, power, all the world has to offer because we will be on the hunt for the One Piece uh, with uh, a special returning guest, uh, you know, a uh, fan favorite, our boy Cap, and I am so excited. I told you guys very early in the podcast that I was going to be hatless all throughout, and I had one exception. This is my one exception. I couldn't do a One Piece live action review and not have a straw hat. Besides, I've been meaning to get one of these for years, and now I have an excuse. And because, and now that I have it, and it's seen on camera, I can write it off. So yay. Uh, very excited. Cannot wait to talk about this show. I have a straw hat, but not the straw hat. But I probably won't wear it because of headphones. I but have... I do have something planned. I mean, I'm... I have... I'm big. I'm figuring out a way to wear it with headphones, but it it still works. I have hats, but they're not like one piece power level hat. Yep. Um, all, and yep. Also, 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 I'm going to make I'm going to make sure purposefully not to shave for a week so I can have a full power mustache as well. Nice. I got something planned for uh next week too nice nice wise very uh very very intrigued um uh, you know if you've been following my streams i've talked about how much this show surprised me and uh you know you'll find out you know whether i liked it or hated it or you know anything in between in that episode honestly uh, like, if you thought that this episode was long, I need you guys to prepare. This One Piece episode, it's gonna be a big one. I will try 
to not have long news stories or any hyperfixation trailers. Yep. Okay. So look forward to all that, and we will see you on deck next week. Channel Chasers, up, up, and away. Peace.